Oh, the old fresh crack. Just you know, we, we could emulate that sound, and I could just use it as a soundboard, but where's the fun in that? Nobody wants to do that. So, so Some people might think that's what we do. Every single yeah, time. These are real cracks. Nope, see? That just happened. That is a fresh... <laughs> well, it's been out of the fridge a little while. Probably not quite as frosty as it was 10 minutes ago. I've been waiting for us to start this segment so I could... Yeah, we got off on a tangent talking about meatloaf and all that good fun stuff. Oh, meat. Not mm. quite as cold of a beer as it was a minute ago for you. But, but you'll muscle through it. And in, in the name of meat, it was worth it. Yeah. I'm it glowing is, like the metal on the edge of a knife. It is mid-season <laughs> meatloaf. How could it not be any... I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> this is true. I just can't wait for the next break. What's gonna, what are we going to play? Nobody know. knows. Who know. knows? I don't even know. Two out of three ain't bad. Yeah. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. Paradise by a dashboard light. Mm. I would do anything for love. Mm. We might save those for the Patreon show. Mm, who knows? Speaking of the Patreon show, yeah, we're about to get into a question that was asked, uh, basically asking about Rashad Penny, and and there was a trade that was on the table for for one of our patrons. He wanted to know what we thought about him, and we basically got like in an argument amongst ourselves about whether we should text this guy back on on the Patreon community page, or should we like start a Google Hangouts and chit chat it through? Should we wait and talk about it on the free show? Should we talk about it on the Patreon show, the after show? I don't know. There's just so many ways we can answer a patron's question that we can't even figure out the best way to get it. We're just trying to figure that out for your pleasure. Yeah, well, it, it spawned this discussion of, of what to kind of do with Rashad Penny right now and our feelings about him. Um, so I think we'll start off with... Uh, we'll go with, with Jay Wayne's side of this argument. So basically what, me the what, what the Patreon member was asking was if he can get a mid-round... Uh, pick for Rashad Penny right now uh, would you go ahead and take that which is probably about what you paid for him so just yeah I mean some people might have got a little wild and crazy and had him at the one two one sure maybe maybe if he was uh, maybe if it was earlier in the season you maybe you got excited and and you drafted him a little high so maybe you could be taking a loss on this or maybe it was at the end of the season and the preseason when he was banged up and there was reports of him gaining some weight and dropped down to, you know, seven, right. eight, nine, ten range. He sure. Gained if 18 pounds. No way. That was all muscle. He he penny went one, two, one, three, not two, because in the early drafts, guys wasn't hurt yet. Penny went one, three in a draft in and in a FFPC draft with Casey and I. And then by the time the late rookie drafts came around in preseason, I got him at 110. Right. In a league. And Royce so, Freeman was kind of jumping right, up Royce in that. Right, Royce Freeman. Yeah, Penny, everything Penny was area. going wild and crazy. And, and Sonny Michelle was already banged up with a knee injury. Things were going wild and crazy. Set the stage. Our boy Chris hits us up on Patreon. He said, give it a little context. He's like, I'm two and five, Jay Wayne. Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily throwing it in on the season, but I'm two and five. Things aren't looking great. I got the offer for a mid first round pick on the table. Should I take it? A ten man league, just for context, mm. and 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 he has a nice stable of running backs already. Oh, a solid roster. Chris Browning's team is crushing right yeah, now. Yeah, got got a good stable of backs. But at two and five, that's how fantasy football works. Right, happens sometimes. I would take the trade. I would move Penny right now for basically what I had to pay for him. I uh, I'm but I'm like the least biggest Penny lover on the show. I'm I like him the least. Well, I, I don't feel I it down on my plums. I wouldn't say anybody. This isn't a, a wasn't a big, uh, huge penny loving show. We, I had him no. ranked as this as the sixth RB, right out of out of this class, which is is not. Some people had him higher, like you were saying, he was going one three on, on in some circles. So I didn't, not not that any of us really loved him. I, I, I liked him just fine. We all had our questions. We had well, he we went had 20, scream, right. We had twenty scream. minutes of talking about Penny and why we were had our reservations about him, but we still liked the size and the frame and and what he had done. And you can't you can't be too upset about the production and all that other things. But we had some reservations. Jay Wayne being the most reserved, Big Co being moderately indifferent, and I was not. I didn't love him, and I didn't necessarily hate him. Well, so. some people liked him. Some limited people loved him, and then the Seahawks took him in the first round, right? Right. And then he screamed up the oh, peep, see, see, oh, you know. And then so the people that liked him were all over him, and then some people that didn't even have any idea who he was was like, okay, I'm taking him right behind Geis because the Seattle Seahawks took him in the first round, first back off the board after after Barkley. So so why why uh, the uh, well, how much time you got, buddy? <laughs> I got it. I got the rest of an hour. Right, right. So, 
you put on the show sheet last week because we were we fill up a show sheet full of things to potentially talk about and we never get to them all. Um, Imagine that. But Penny was on here, so I I, I was looking into it. Uh, and and Seahawks were on a buy, so it was a good week to skip him anyway. Um, True. And you ask, you know, he you basically said that he deserves more run, and there's no reason that a team that's running the ball like the Hawks are running it shouldn't give this guy more chances, mm-hmm. right? And you know, I, I've actually been fairly impressed with some of the runs that he's put down on tape this year. There you go. There has been times when he looks like the big. So you're strong. saying there's a chance. It looks like there's times when he's the big, strong, fast guy that they drafted him to to be. Uh, but then you also see the mistakes. And I, I think that's the thing here is I, I don't think the Seahawks fully trust this guy yet, which, you know, it's young in his career. I get it. Um, but he's had some fumbling issues. Sure, he broke his hand, but you can't fumble. Uh, fumble's a fumble. He's muffed He's muffed some kicks. He's returned kicks that he shouldn't have of return, he should have just yeah. downed him in the end zone. He's not doing that though. It's every week. <laughs> this guy's is a liability for this team at times. That's why he didn't play a single snap versus the Rams. They didn't let him return a single kick, it's, and they didn't give him a single touch. It's maybe the reason that he didn't play versus the Rams. I like your okay. theory though, but I'm not. I like your about theory. It. When so a then, game, a, divi- a, a hard fought division rival game, slugfest. You can't even, make a mistake and beat the Rams. High scoring affair. And you're in no, the game. Yep. No. No. No need. But it's not like a, he's been getting a crazy amount of run, and then you're in this high tension situation, and then you're like, "Whoa, bro, we can't play you." Right. But I, mean, I still but like. I like the theory. I'm kind of what I'm laying down. Uh, and then, and then the next game, they give him. You know, they're blowing out the team, and they finally give him some run. And and then you see another like just where it made me shake my head and it proves to now, me the game, that he's not out of shape. The They're, next game is that after the Rams the in, right. in London against the before the bye in London against the Raiders, they're crushing him. He comes in, plays in the fourth right, quarter. In okay. the second half. Okay. He had a nice uh twenty yard screen pass, I think, early in the second quarter, mm-hmm. and then didn't get another touch until that game was pretty much already out of hand. Right. And then at the very end of the game, and this proved, I, I think I just said it, mis- I misspoke just a second ago, but to me, he's not even in shape. So we heard the news. We already mentioned about how he gained 18 pounds, right? Not all muscle, no way he could have gained 18 pounds of muscle. So you hate seeing that. I hate, you know, that's just screams Eddie Lacy to me, a dude gaining a ton of weight, right? Sure. Um, and so at the end of that game, they give him the ball a couple times, and he actually he gets the first down that basically ices the game. And he's his head's not in the game. He doesn't realize now that they can just take a couple knees. He gets up after carrying it, and he's like motioning for them to sub him out because he's tired. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Nah, Number man, one, just stay you don't in. know if he's tired. He could have. He could have. <laughs> No, because he could have easily had something that ailed him a little bit, and he was like, "Whoa, Bo, <laughs> hang on, let, hey, let me, let me, maybe br- bring somebody maybe, in here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe my, maybe a brace wasn't right, or a piece of equipment. <laughs> like you don't know no, that he well, was tired. Maybe, but then they were like, "No, you're staying in because of the clock, and the game's over." And he was like, "Oh," and he kind of like says, "Oh," and smiles and like shakes his head, and then he takes the knee, like stands yeah. there and takes the knee. That's so, funny. but his head's not in the game. He's calling because he's tired. He fumbles. They don't trust him. I never like this cat. If I, I could move I him for a first round bias. pick, I don't. I don't. I don't like this part of the argument. Confirmation bias. You never liked him. You're going to hang on to right. everything. Right. Right. But and, and but what has he done this year besides have a bust off a couple decent runs where he looks good? But he also looks like he's shot in the neck with a dart at sometimes. He just sure. goes down super easy, which is what we saw in college. Sometimes. Well, while he I'm can't still gain th- the trust of this team, like why should I? While I'm still hold thinking on. about it, the Eddie Lacy reference. He. The weight gain does not make you feel great, and that was really bad. Obviously, he's it's coming back off. He's coming from a it's point. He's coming from a point that Lacey never was, as far as like long speed. You know, so I mean, it's not like he what Lacey hey, what Eddie gain. Lacey was a bruiser through and through. Never was fast. Nobody called Eddie Lacey. Maybe fast. his wife was pregnant and he didn't want her to feel bad about eating. You know, we've I just, just with, wanted to throw it. You know, we've seen this before. Don't get me wrong. I was just <laughs> as worried and not excited about Rashad Penny's weight. I didn't want to draft him at 110 either at that right. point in the season. You know, where right. we were in the week three of the preseason. Bet you wish our you late rookie draft. I wish I'd have had Calvin a, Ridley, huh? A couple picks up, but you hate wide receivers well i mean yeah i don't, I don't right? actually to be fair i'm not sure if calvin ridley was available yeah, he was yeah i, I, he was, I think he was. i think the only i think it was dj moore was the only wide receiver off the board it was uh well okay. eight, eight running backs and what rod receiver 
Yeah, that's nine. So maybe there was I think another. Calvin Ridley might have been off the board. I'm not 100 percent sure, but whatever. Well, I mean, yeah. let's be honest here. I, yeah, I know what. You, yeah, I, I know what Jay no, Wayne's driving. No at. chance. I was taking Calvin right. Ridley at that point. Obviously, now right. that I've seen some things, I, I could I could manage that. But look at all. I mean, just we'll get into the conversation Actually, here I think in it a was second. Christian Kirk. A bunch of other. Uh, no, Christian Kirk went at 112. Okay, well then um, it was because I was Ridley. trying to trade into that. I was trying to make a trade. Neither here else. nor there. Right. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, the biggest thing for me is I have seen those plays where Rashad Penny gets lateral agility out the wazoo in the hole or j- jumps around the side. There was a there was a couple plays where he he shows why they wanted him. I don't know if he's ever showed why he was a first round draft pick ahead of some of the other cats. No, I haven't seen that. But I've seen not defending the ability. pick of the Seahawks and where they took him. No, I don't like. I've I don't seen, didn't like that at all. I've seen ability out of a big man. Like he's big and he can move. And I've seen him move. Sure, he has done some things that you don't want a rookie running back to do. And you know we've there's there's ups and downs through all running backs. Some running backs are named Carry On Johnson and they can't make a mistake. And some running backs are Ronald Jones and they're just now getting some carries. You never you know it's all right. over the board, especially with this rookie class. But I, my answer to this guy was again being in the same situation I had drafted him myself. I told him I'd have no problem moving Penny for the mid first with all the value he's lost and Chris Carson being a real thing like Casey said he would be last year. I said go for it if you're not married to him. Would it, you know, you got a late rookie draft, and I took him. I told him about my rookie so you, draft. I pulled it up. You took him at one eight. You had one eight, which was the last running back was on the board. One eight. Yep. And then yeah. okay, that makes sense. And then DJ Moore goes at one nine, and Calvin Ridley goes at one ten. That makes and sense. You had Cortland at one eleven. Oh, I thought it was one ten myself. And uh, I did too, but it was one eight. It was the last running back. There were seven running backs straight, and then you took the last one that you could get. And I know you didn't want to make that pick. I know you wanted to trade it. No, I, right? yeah, I was trying to trade. I was right. trying my best to right. trade. So yeah. now if you could go get that same That's exactly value what, yeah. after the shitty start this cat's yeah. had to his career, I'd absolutely Yeah, well, do thanks it. for looking that up. I thought it was 110, but I basically said I took it. I told him I, that I took him at 110. It was 18. Yeah, his last running back on the board. Um, you know, worst case scenario in a 10-team league, this dude's in a 10-team league. You're getting, your, you're getting 110. Worst case scenario, obviously he said it's a mid-pick. So, and then he said, I said, assuming you have your first round pick, now you'd have two first round picks and you can package that up to do pretty much anything you want to do for the most part. And, you know, so that, that was where I was at on it. The, you know, Penny lost a ton of value and coming from way up high when the Seattle, Seattle Seahawks took him early, the whole weight gain fiasco dry. And, and another thing too, weight like gain you, gate, we'll call that. Weight, we don't, no, nobody actually knows. Nobody that knows happened. what happens. The weight gain, the gate, weight gate, it may or may weight, not have weight happened. gate may have may not have happened, but it was a real thing for fantasy value. And he looks sluggish. Like you said, <laughs> it took a blowout of the Raiders in London for him to get the second half. Yeah, he made a play in the second quarter, but for the most part, that was second half blowout action for his stats. Mm-hmm. And Chris Carson is a real thing. And I mean, I, you know, Mike Davis, he's a Gamecock. He's my boy. He's not somebody that's going to hold you back if you are a first round talent and you're supposed to be on the field. You know, he's taken back seats before he shows up and, you know, he takes a back seat. He's a good, good running back, but he's not like that. Hey, I'm a pro's pro and you can't pass me on a depth chart kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And so I just like the Seattle Seahawks have obviously Casey broke down the moves they made, the coaching changes, the defense, the tight ends that they drafted and the the, dra- the drafting and the free agent tight ends that they brought in. So they're finally and, getting them like, back this week. They, they had this plan in mind. Yeah. Casey broke it down With for the you in the preseason. The coordinator, the ch- offensive line changes, some the people hate, tight end changes. Yeah, If you don't like it, that's fine. They hung with the Rams and they almost won cur- – um, uh, the quarterback, Russell Wilson, has the least amount of te- attempts per game in the league right now, and they, that's what they're doing, and they're 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 winning slash almost beat the Rams. They had a slow is, start, you know, but they've looked better they, recently. They're coming on strong, and Defense this is their is philosophy. Sure. And this is, you know, so I'm not, I'm not hating on the – you can't hate on the Seahawks for what they're doing if it's improving when it's and, not and working they're and they're, better. When it's not working and they're running the ball and everyone's like, Brian Schottenheimer's the worst. I don't know why we brought him in here. He's terrible. But when it's working and you're running the ball a shit ton and you're playing some good defense and then Russell Wilson can ad-lib some and now he's starting to get parts and pieces back – it's it's not as terrible as exactly. as he wants, but when you're losing, you like to point fingers and every, say every Schottenheimer's time. the worst. I don't know why we hired this every guy, time. which is it's fair. It's a different NFL, and you want to see this high flying act. But right. a win's a win, and exactly. if you can get wins so, doing what they were doing, and and which is part of the reason that ha- kept helped me keep Penny uh, elevated in liking him some because I wasn't necessarily in love with the prospect, and I didn't like where they took him at all. Nope, I thought it was stupid. 
Um, not that I'm against taking running backs in the first round, but I just didn't like I had other running backs slotted ahead of him. And I just like I'm most not, people. Did. I'm not sure why you took him. And the, right. but like you said, when people were very validated, when sure. he did get taken in that for at the end of the first round over some of these other backs. But to, to the to with the Schottenheimer and the and the offensive line, maybe not quite being as bad as people thought it was going to be and, and some bigger sets and sticking with the run game helped me stick with uh, my my like for Rashad Penny. Which you never loved him to begin right. with, but that was you know he was. But it helped me from being like I'm fading him for over some of these receivers in the rookie draft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I liked the situation that he was rolling into, even though I didn't agree with what oh, they did. Oh, we loved the situation. We were in love with the situation. We thought the Chris Carson talk was just some craziness. How did all the Chris? You know the the coach had the the Russell Wilson Matt Flynn thing. Was it Matt Flynn from the? Yeah, yeah. So that whole thing happened. You know they paid Flynn a lot of money. Russell Wilson's only a third round draft pick. He gets in, beats him out in camp. He's a starter. So that it had happened before, but you get the first round draft pick and nobody thought Chris Carson would get the nod. Right. And obviously maybe if Penny doesn't break his finger or whatever. And Penny was if Penny, Penny doesn't was get hurt, his run in the, maybe, in the preseason. Maybe if he doesn't get hurt and put on and, some and weight. In the, and maybe weight gate. And, yeah. Maybe weight gate never happens and Penny and of course Chris Carson isn't getting the love that he's getting. The but, weight was before he broke his hand before the preseason. So ooh, you can't blame the Jay the, Wayne ain't gonna miss a shot. I, I'm not sure it was. Actually, I don't think it was either. I think at all. It, I think that it, all kind of came out after he was yeah. on the back end of that thing. Jay Wayne grimaces and goes to his computer but, to search up. for Anyhow, some I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the other approach on this and say that while I do agree a hundred percent that, excuse me, two first rounders are fun and you can do some things with packages. Right. That when you have the two first rounders, that there there are certainly things that you can do, and this guy has Chris Thompson on his team and I said you know yeah it'd be nice you could take these two first and maybe a Chris Thompson and go get something that's maybe a sure thing and he already did that just to so y'all boys know everybody that's listening right now this Patreon thing we got going on it actually is popping off and our community page is popping off and he everybody's coming in with their trade talk and it's incredible and he's already traded Casey said trade Chris Thompson he's already packaged up we'll talk about that deal later but just wanted to throw it out there yeah what? so but I've, I've, I had two first round picks in this same league that we're talking about where you had to draft Rashad Penny. And yep. I was I was trying to deal two first round picks for a better player. And I was trying to add Devontae Adams in a first to to a player and trying to get one of these upper echelon running backs and nobody will come off of them. So, you know, it's nice in theory to have them. Um, yeah. And, you know, maybe you got to go in there and be a little bit more bullish and overpay for one of these. Uh, big time running backs, which I wasn't necessarily willing to do. Me and you had doubled up on uh, two first rounders and Christian McCaffrey to get Zeke, and you know it hasn't panned out like we exactly thought it would necessarily this year. But it's been fine. Sure. Like, and I would do it again. I would do it again. Um, as crazy as it sounds, obviously there was a couple weeks there where Christian McCaffrey was everybody's favorite running back right. on the face of the earth, but he got thirty rushing yards last week in and, a victory. You know, we'll talk and about the Amari Zeke Cooper got shut thing. out too. Right. Zeke, Zeke got shut out too. But last it, week we'll talk about the Amari yeah. Cooper and the impact of of the Cowboys and and Zeke and all that moving forward. You're missing um, Kyle Frederick um, and. Love. Prince Frederick. Travis Frederick. Travis Frederick. <laughs> Travis and, Frederick, the center. And uh, some some parts and pieces on that offense need on receiver. Anyway. <laughs> Martin. But Zach Martin. Yep. As far as the penny trade goes, like I'm just going to disagree with, like, yes, I, I do agree with the two firsts, like I was saying, and, and you can get something good. But it doesn't always work that way. Like, you can't always just turn those two firsts into something awesome that's safe. And sometimes you get you, you kind of get stuck in the position. Depends how bad you want to do it and how bad you want to move on from these picks. But... I'm not going to just sell the two picks for something that I'm not 100% sold on. Um, so I, I wasn't able to get a really a deal done with anything that I thought was worth those two first round picks in a class that I had done a lot of work in and I thought was pretty good. So I'll just make my picks. I don't know what this class is going to be. Just looking at inside, looking out, the running backs don't look as good. Oh, it's all about the 2020 season, class. And the receivers look good. So I don't know what's really going to happen. I don't know if this is the best draft class. I haven't really gotten into that. Anyway, like I just I see this as somewhat of a lateral move. Like I don't want to really necessarily trade my one if it's a it's a ten man league. If I'm getting one six or seven or eight for is that, that's my mid. I don't know what my mid is going to be, and I'm not right. really sure how you know what your mid's going to be at this point. Sure, but 
I'm just not ready to just move on from from Rashad Penny. They got a lot of draft capital invested in him. And while that's not everything, like I do view Chris Carson as a good player, but nothing great that isn't replaceable. Certainly Mike Davis is replaceable, replaceable. in my opinion. Uh, this is the same team that's keeping pro, a healthy ProSize off the field, which I think is a mistake for them. Like if, if ProSize is healthy, I think that he, he could be a good player. Um but that's neither here nor there. I love Pro Sison, and I can't believe he's not on the field right not now. Not going to get started on Pro Sison. I think he was, but he did end up getting hurt. Anyway, um, of course he did. I just think that you know you see what Carry On Johnson's doing right now. He is getting held back a little bit by coaching staff and whatever decisions they're making. Like Legarrette Blunt's still getting he, twelve carries a game or splitting reps with him. Like there shouldn't be any reason for that. There's no reason that Legarrette Blunt should be in impeding on what. No, carry on Johnson's doing right now. It's Absolutely clear that not. carry on Johnson is the better player in this offense. Not even close. You're not getting as good a look at Rashad Penny or nearly any look at Rashad Penny and what no he looks. can do, which I don't understand that factor of things. Maybe it is the Seahawks. It is Pete Carroll. And they he does do Alex Collins. They did cut. They make some questionable decisions. I'm not. Maybe this is a ego thing. Maybe, you know, I don't know what happened. I don't know if maybe they're not Chris Carson is or uh, Rashad Penny isn't taking things as serious as they want or the the injury happened and now maybe they maybe he fumbled once or twice and muffed a kick or whatever and they don't trust him that much maybe all that's in play I don't know why they're not giving maybe him. the coach didn't want that player and they drafted him high and he's like I'm gonna hold him back on purpose uh, any of those are possible I don't know why but all I know is is that if he could get on the field and get something like the 12 carries a game and show something if anything like he's going to be worth more than that one six or one seven or one eight or one nine or whatever you're trading him for rapidly like in within three games of him showing any sort of life I think he's going to be like you carry on Johnson you couldn't get you get those two ones and Chris Thompson somebody might not accept that trade for carry on Johnson at this moment like carry on Johnson you got to pry carry on Johnson away from somebody like nobody's giving you Sony Michelle maybe now that he's got an ankle maybe right, you could get right. him from somebody nobody's giving you Nick Chubb right now like yeah don't come at me with your two ones right carry you can't, on because you, you ain't getting him you can't get them off people's team and we haven't even seen what Rashad Penny can do this is dynasty I'm I'm willing to play the wait and see like he's a rookie like maybe he made a couple mistakes maybe he's making some mistakes in practice he's got to sort those things out I just not I'm just not willing to sell I get it what's basically in my opinion a lateral move with the exception of now you got two first round picks so when you add those together it's not a lateral move but I just we see how hard it is to get running backs in general like in every yeah. league I'm in nobody is trading you a running back if I need a receiver I can go find a receiver a decent receiver I could I could get almost any receiver off just about anybody's team f for not a crazy price tag right now. Yeah. Right. But I can't do anything yeah. to pry a running back from anybody. If you're talking about Matt Breida, he's the best running back that anybody's ever seen. Well, I think he's going to be really good and I need that. Or right. I, you're talking about Isaiah Crowell. Like, I can't sell him right now because I don't know what my running backs are doing. Or, exactly. You know, he nobody's trying to give up a running back. And obviously, right now, this guy's losing, but he has a good stable of backs. So I'm just not sure why you want to go ahead and sell that player off when you have a decent stable and you can afford to wait for Rashad Penny. And we just, we, you haven't even seen. And like Jay Wayne said, there has been a handful of plays where I saw him out there and it was like, he did look quick. He did look elusive. He looks like a big guy who sometimes is hard to bring down. Sometimes he goes down a little too easy. That was one of the bigger knocks we had on him. Didn't like the contact behind the line of scrimmage and how. Well, I haven't seen him really <laughs> the busting and breaking tackles really, but I've seen him burst through a hole that was open right. and hit it hard, which and is I, what he did in college. I think he's got decent hands and then just a that's the to, caveat. To then, to then go back to all this, like I just think, Chris, I don't, like I like Chris Carson. I was you're the first Chris Carson. I was uh, yeah, you were or, first on him. I like everything I saw from him, and I like the way he plays the game. But he's not an unreplaceable talent. It's not like oh, there's no way we can take Chris Carson off the field. Right. He just does, but it's really hard for them to do so though because he does all the little things well. He can catch. He can pass protect. And I'm, he's I'm gonna not, get I'm three not yards arguing with that. Dust. I'm just arguing with like the eliteness of a player right. and yet. saying I that he's it. replaceable, especially with a guy you have a lot of draft capital invested in you haven't seen a whole lot but i mean mike davis why is and mike davis has been fine on the field but like you got to get penny out on the field just to see what you got especially on a team who's running it like they were running it and as you guys like to point out and every you know, injuries happen yeah exactly. chris carson could get hurt next week mike davis could get hurt next week both of them could get hurt next week they're getting a ton of carries a piece and this is a offense that's predicated off the run they want to run the ball that's clear so at some point if he could just get in there and get 12 carries a game 10 carries a game and show you that there's some life there i just think that this value goes through the roof and, and all of a sudden next year you're trading two first round picks and chris thompson to get 
Rashad Penny back on your team. Like I, I agree. And let me, my final point there is is I completely agree with what you're talking about. This is exactly what our model is built off of. My model, at least, for rookie drafts is take the running backs because it happens quicker. Obviously, Calvin Ridley blew up a couple times, and he's fun, and his his value's there. And Cortland Sutton looks like a stud. But you know, just take your first rookie r- first rookie wide receiver in most drafts was DJ Moore. And he's in a situation where there's targets going all over the field, except for basically him. And it's not and that he looks bad with the ball. No, the not at all. It looks good. He's, he's been you know, blowing but, it too. He, he just they but, haven't been benching him because of it. But the Sony Michels and the and not that he was going ahead of these guys, but the, you know, the, yeah, he, but he was he was going ahead was. of all the carry on Johnson. And, 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 and anybody of, that didn't listen to us was taking him and, over carry on Johnson. But in all the hype leading up, like Penny was hot, and nobody had Penny over carry on. At least a lot of people didn't have Penny over carry on Johnson. Some people had. You uh, mean they didn't have carry on over? They didn't Penny. have carry. Right carry on yeah. over penny they didn't have chubb a lot of people were downgrading chubb they didn't oh, like sure. all, all of a sudden chubb wasn't any good and penny was ahead of him and some people didn't like sony michelle and and Ch- penny was one two for a lot of people yeah, yeah. well obviously after guys went down penny was one two for a lot of people but what i i the whole rookie running back escalation of value first year is what i love in my rookie 100%. running backs part now the How other quickly side they can yeah, ascend to, to start exactly. ability but as a rashad penny owner the other side of that is is uh, oh and and Ronald Jones Alder in another league is like holy cow how quickly the mighty can fall though you sure. know and I get it I guess he didn't fall too far because he's still getting offered a first for him you yeah. know so I get that's what I'm I but the first that round pick you get offered if you've had Rashad Penny and like you said you got other running backs so you got Rashad Penny Chris gets this offer in his inbox and he's like well. I got other running backs, and I've dealt with this emotional roller coaster that is Rashad Penny ownership, and now I get a first round pick. That first round pick, the only thing it cannot do is lose sure. value. You know, so that now it's not going to double in value like Rashad Penny could. But that first round pick ain't going. It can't get hurt. It can't blow an ACL. It can't go go out for on IR for the rest of the season. And all it really does is increase in value. The more we get to know about these people coming out of college, and then this time next year or this in four, six months, that actually gets a little more valuable. Mm-hmm. Now. If Rashad Penny gets run down the stretch, he's probably more valuable than that. But there's a guarantee in that first round pick, so I Definitely can. That's why I said I think it's higher probability that Penny gets some run down the stretch here, and maybe he does or doesn't light it up. But I just don't see. I don't see his value falling too too much. Even if he doesn't get any run, it's well he didn't get any run yet. So yeah, I think I get, the value yeah. kind of stays where it is at least for another season. Yeah, uh, but and, you're, and an you're, you've seen a bl- you've seen a couple of weeks window there where my man was fat and out of shape and can't get anywhere near the field and you've just there's that just that blackness there where you're like oh my sure. god I'm a Rashad Penny owner. I spent a first round pick on him and now he's barely worth anything. I don't even know. I was getting trade offers for that pick. I should have made a pick. You know who I, I should have, I could have, I would have, but now I got Penny and he ain't worth nothing. But then he is it, still worth something. I though. know because he gets on the field and he has a couple plays. I don't even and know. So if now it's you're getting that, first round pick. that to much of like, not going to say the casual dynasty fan, but not like the crazy dynasty fan who's trying to watch every game and watch every, like, I think some people just are still, Hey, you got, he's a first round draft pick and they, they got Chris Carter. Carson, and and he just, put up 2,000 yards. Right, and, he's, yeah. and he just hasn't been on the field. So I just don't think there's... And everybody a, on Twitter loves him. I don't think there's a huge value drop coming even if he doesn't play that much through through the offseason, and, and we'll see what happens. Um, I, you know, I just... There I, is a... He's still a young rookie running back with first-round draft pick. There is a floor to his value as long as he don't get hurt. It, you know, at least for a full another season. I get you. I get that. It's just that first-round pick, you can do things. I, you know, I, so I didn't mind the trade. I don't... I don't I'm not condoning the trade. I just, <laughs> I, but I can see, I can see the. That means you're not approving. Yeah, I, but the, I can see the value in having two first round picks. I just say that, that they're, this could quickly turn into Rashad Penny being worth two first round picks plus very quickly because there is just like we just talked about with all of this how high, high well, how highly he was ranked yeah. and how much love was for him there's there's a built-in fan factor there yeah. people who are waiting for him to do anything to say i told you so look at how good rashad penny is just like we've talked about like locket on this show multiple Tyler times locket, with, yeah it doesn't now he's starting to ascend again people are back on the train and how good he is because oh, so there was told you. there was a ton of hype for this guy there's a ton of hype for penny and i i just i think the stock can can kind of hang on. So I think I'm more in the I'm trying to buy Penny in this situation now in a league where I'm 
Are you giving up a mid first next year for I, a penny? In in certain search situations, I will. In the whoa, in, whoa, whoa. in the league that where we're all three in it, and it's like a home league, and we the, the one we do the mock it up, fuck it up. Like I am hurting for running backs right now. I had all, two years ago, I had seven running backs. This week, I had to start Kyle Ustrek. <laughs> like. <laughs> Kyle, uh, Carlos got traded Thursday and yeah. <laughs> I was up a creek. I couldn't yeah. get anybody and nobody would even deal me anybody. Like I can't even get anybody to give me some dude who might get me six points. I mean, but I did they're, tell they're you. are hanging on. You did. I said, send me a second round pick and you can have. What's I couldn't, his, what's I couldn't give you a second round pick for Peyton Barber. Peyton though. Barber. That was it. Not, not for a potential. Maybe I just, I was in a pickle. I needed a one week <laughs> starter here and I could figure it out in the coming weeks. I told you Carlos I'd give you a fourth give back. Ah, whatever. I can't do that. <laughs> but in that in that situation, like no, I, I'm 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 you started. Kyle. I'm right in the middle of the pack right now. Still, I have a good team in my opinion. You have a chance to go to playoffs. I could get in the playoffs, and if I could get some running back points, I could easily make a run. And I have so, Rashad Penny, and I and we were actually we were arguing about the same thing. Yeah. You were like, well, I'd give a first for him, and I was like, send it over. Uh, but I can't right now because my first right. I gotta. I'm trying to see what I can get from my first for a startable player right now because now i help. need it you need now help. if i didn't and if i was in the situation like this guy i would be going the opposite direction i got a stable of backs how about i try to add one more whose value could easily increase or uh, it could go down every every sure it could but i don't like i said i don't i think you got at least another year window before it there's does. a floor to it there's not it, it can't go but it's, it can't go again away. which is why we do a lot of stuff on patreon and we talk about the things what we do is because it's all situational of you know it's okay to talk about players in a vacuum but when you really get it down to brass tacks exactly. and your circumstance in this particular league no i would not trade uh, my first for Rashad Penny because I, I can't afford to. Yep. In our other home league that we started this year where I feel like I got a really good team, maybe I'm going to compete this year, maybe I'm not still, I'm kind of in flux, I would trade a first round pick for Rashad Penny yeah. because I, I feel like I can. I got guys in both of those leagues, yeah. which right now in that 12-man where I only have two, two running backs to start and didn't have one this week sucks because I could have drafted... Uh, Somebody that was maybe startable in that position. No, Sony Michelle was gone. I had one six. I oh, think. you were one five. You were one five. One five. Michelle went three. Yeah. I could have got Chubb, which would be probably starting now. Yeah. Um, but I went with Geis because I felt like it was too good to pass up at five or whatever. Yeah. And now it's killing me. But I got Geis in both leagues. <laughs> and now it's killing me. I was thinking about that last week. I was like, damn it. But next week, next year, it's going to be like I had two first round draft picks because Geis is, Geis is coming off the bench and yeah. I think he's about to light it up. Yeah. But. In that other league, I would certainly like. I know uh, Derek Bell, which has no reference to anybody listening. He has him, and I would for sure. Tra- <laughs> I would for sure trade my first round pick for Rashad Penny next year, without a, without a doubt. Yeah, like, I, I, it's not. I can control me not having a super high first round pick in that league because I even if I don't make the playoffs, I could either. It's it's a play for the pick. So if I got into if I was in the, even in the losers bracket, I could, you so, know. I could not, throw. Not, I could throw a game. <laughs> you could not have the best lineup. Right. Then I could. Act, I, I could forget to pick up a kicker. I, well, not. We don't have kickers or defenses in that league, as none of y'all should. But, right. Right. You know, I could just maybe start Brita over Ingram, or maybe start you know somebody mm-hmm. over Zeke or somebody over you know I could make you can't some, sit Zeke and you're in good conscience you, you can't never sit know Zeke. maybe I'm I'm questionable about this offensive line yeah, your little cousin I, got a hold of your computer Sunday yeah. morning and clicked the wrong stuff I was out of town <laughs> no cell service yeah right anyway enough rambling about that but that's I, I wanted to take the opposite not I wanted to do I felt good about taking the other side you were side telling of that the argument. truth about the right. way you would handle this right. trade opportunity and I, as you were typing that in and the guy said thanks i was furiously <laughs> typing back like whoa bo here nay, Hold, hang nay. on that, i got a different side to this thing let, yeah. let me what's cool about this i know we got to finish up my producers over here pointing at me saying don't you do it but there's i want to say one more thing about this is what's cool about the the patreon stuff in case he touched on it this guy gave us his roster he gave us his draft picks. He gave us the, the details about the league. Social so security we, number. We, we got his home address. We knew exactly what he was needing. We, he showed us the trades he had recently made. So we knew exactly what he had, what he might have, and what you know all that good stuff. This is 9 o'clock in the morning. I stopped exactly. This dude said I got a trade on the table. And so there's questions that come in, and they're not exactly something that needs to be it's some feedback right away, and we save them for the show. But And we still get on here and we talk about them, but we try to give them a little feedback if there's a trade on the table. So, you know, look, Any feedback is good if feedback you can. when there's a trade t- on the table. We got real jobs. So we, yeah, but you know, we stop. You're, you stopped what you were doing. You're feverishly texting. I stopped what I was doing. I was feverishly texting, <laughs> trying to help this guy out. 
the last part of it, I just want to show this for the people that's not on Patreon yet so they know what they could look forward to and see the value and what you get for $5 a month. The last I see in his roster, the last, after I told him I would, didn't think I would do the trade, I said, also, looking at you your thought roster. You would do the trade. Yeah, I would do the trade mm-hmm. and, get, and, and send him over and get that first back. I said, also, looking at your roster, with Lynch going on IR, I would definitely be trying to turn Doug Martin into a second rounder, question mark, question mark, or better. Put him in a deal that wouldn't get done without a little something extra like Doug Martin. He could look awesome and have another level of value bump, but I say it's kind of unlikely, as bad as the Raiders are. And with Amari, sure. that was just the day Amari Cooper had just being traded. This is definitely Lynch a chance. just went on IR. Or right. And so, wasn't so play. Doug Martin's hot. I said, this is a chance to see the Raiders quit on the season the way the Giants did last year. If he comes out and looks bad, you might not ever get that second rounder back or whatever. So, and then Casey. In his response to what I said, saying I wouldn't do the deal, I would hang on to Rashad Penny, he goes, by the way, looking at your roster, I would package up Chris Thompson and try to make something out of him and this and this and this going forward because you're 2-5 and five and you're really not going anywhere, so might as well move Chris Thompson and get something better. And he made a deal. So that was two, you know, and maybe he maybe he still can trade Doug Martin before Sunday and, you know, things look bad or whatever, but that's just, that's the type of things that we're trying to help our Patreon members for. And sure. I wanted to finish what I, I wanted to, sh- to share those two things with our listeners and say, hey, you know, you you get in here on Patreon, you get a custom question, you tell us everything you got, we'll give you everything we got back yeah. and try try to help you out i don't know i might go to bed bath beyond i don't <laughs> yeah. know if i'll have enough take time. that little gun and shoot all <laughs> right. the little things put them on your registry right might not have enough time all right well you want to let me take us out in closing uh oh, you know a closing well the in this has been i mean it needs a closing this has been a song solid long segment here uh my, my main argument against penny here was basically that the seahawks don't trust him i will concede that it's hard to trust the seahawks in their judgment they did cut alex collins the caveat hey Pete, for, you got any more of that gum? Right. <laughs> it's none of your damn business, Ace. Eh? Gum chops per second. <laughs> I'd prefer if you stay out of my personal affairs. Uh, the caveat for Penny is that he is a really good receiver. So, it, you know, it'd be a lot easier for me to go against him if, it, if he wasn't such a good receiver. And then the fact that he just he plays the running back position, and it's so hard to get a running back that you got to try and hold on to any running back that you can get. Uh, so in the words of me, I, you know, in regards to running backs, I need you, I want you, but Rashad Penny, there ain't no way that I'm ever going to love you. But don't be sad, because <laughs> no two way. out of three ain't bad. There ain't no way I'm going to love you. two out of three ain't. Give me the drop. Well, that be said, well, I'm going to, we're going to play some music, and okay. it'll be like a mix up here. <laughs> we got another meat song Like going. a mashup? Right. And it would just be, uh, it would just be weird. But, so with that being said, I'd still take the first round pick for Rashad So we're in a band? <laughs> We're all in a band. What? No. I mean, I can't sing. Oh, I don't. I can't this play. Was, any I was just playing off of either. the nationwide commercials with Peyton Manning and right. Uh, I Casey the can, pl- Casey can play the drums and he could probably sing if he had to with that Clive Walford voice. Can, I can definitely Clive hit you voice. with some harmonies. Jay Wayne, be the lead. Uh-uh. I mean, you got the ones and two. You could produce the music. You could make music on your with your lights over there and your blinkers <laughs> and your knobs. About, I think we could have boop, a boop, boop, <laughs> career and maybe some some scat. <laughs> I'm the worst singer in the world. Uh, I listen to my music real loud so that I can sing along and you don't have to hear me. Right. You got to turn it up. Uh, get turned. All right. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's get out of here. Like, Jesus. Let, let's let me take us out. We got your meat. We got you covered. We got your beer. Revelry's got you covered. Right. Hey, four year block party coming uh, yeah. up this Sunday. If you're in Charleston, little oyster roast by Darling Oyster Bar. Right. Great oysters over there. Burgers Solid. by Pub Fair. Burgers by I just actually just had my first Pub Fair uh burger Ooh. last Friday. Strong to quite strong. Dank. Very good. They usually run out of burgers when they do pop ups, which right. is Impressive. A good yeah. telltale sign. Strong there. to quite strong that's, that the burgers are well, good. What you're there for is to sell them, and you right. sold them all, so right. that's good. So you pop down and get out of there. <laughs> yeah. Pop up, sell them out, pop down. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, for a great cause, Green Heart Project. Uh, look them up. They do great work. Uh, yeah, they're going to shut down the street, have a little block party. If you're in the Charleston area, head down to uh, old Conroy Street. It's going to be a good time. Always is on their uh, block parties. This Absolutely. one happens to be for a good cause and for their four years. Uh, in business, crushing business. They got so many gold medals. They're just yeah. proud to be drinking their beer on air. Right. Sure. Yeah, they just went to the U.S. or some beer championship, won gold twice, or no, one gold and a bronze. Almost got Brewery of the Year, but yeah. missed it by. 
Once they get a little more money, we'll they'll build us a studio. Right. <laughs> Uh, real quick, so we just talked about Rashad Penny. Uh, if you're on, if you're listening to this on YouTube, go check out that talk about would you basically trade Rashad Penny for a first round pick? I misspoke. He did break his hand or his finger before he gained the 16 pounds. It's not 18. We inflated him even more than he was already. Inflated. You see, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> still breaking your finger, you can still run. I mean, come on, you can still not eat a lot. <laughs> you never know. Like I said, maybe his wife was pregnant. Didn't want to make her feel bad. You don't want to fat shame these days. We're going to have to look into that. All right. Well, you got to learn to dance before you learn to crawl. Let's get over that. (laughs) Popped it. (laughs) Let's get over to some uh, some Carlos Hyde. A big trade goes down. Carlos is shipped out. Shipped out. Led to me playing Kyle Juszczyk this week. Right. That one hurt. Right. So uh, what do we make of this? I mean, there's a ton of different things to talk about here. Uh, I guess first, let's talk about you know, the impact this has for you, your value of Carlos Hyde, right? You got Carlos Hyde. What are you thinking? Um, I mean, I think immediately over the next week or three, you, I think you'll be probably okay. Uh, but long term for the rest of this season, I, I guess that's not necessarily long term, but for the rest of the right. season, you just don't know what you're going to get. Maybe when Leonard comes back, you see maybe a 60 40. Carlos to Leonard and then the next week maybe it's 64 is Leonard to Carlos and then it starts fading out more like 80 20 and you know I think if Leonard's healthy yeah I don't think there's much of a chance once he's they see him full go that there's you're going to see too too much Carlos great move by the Jaguars overall we'll get Absolutely. to that uh, in a second I mean I don't, I don't do you guys see it any other way I mean I'm I'm a Carlos owner like I said that that trade really killed me this week I, I think you can probably play him this week this is what the jaguars are looking to do yeah on the rock well as a carlos owner myself in one league i was uh you know we're riding high three two three weeks ago when man you know the switch was made and and um the the 80 yards and a touchdown 100 yards and two touchdowns i mean you know it was back-to-back big games out of carlos and and then obviously they run into baltimore's defense and that didn't go so well and you're like all right i can get away get you know get by with that and you know they got beat up by the Chargers, so that wasn't a whole lot of opportunities for Carlos to be getting in some of those games. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, they just they weren't they weren't close games where they could continue pounding it with Carlos like the, they had been. Yeah. The Browns' games in general have been so up and down. That's almost like two or three. You and know, should be expected with a rookie quarterback and a team that's not used to being anywhere near winning. Yeah. I, that's exactly. They. They. They haven't been anywhere near winning in forever, and they get you know, they got to get got a victory this year and broke that curse. But it's just you know, thing a month ago things were great for Carlos owners, and then we kind of was going south, and then all of, you know, then the head coach comes out and says, "Hey, we're going to give Chubb more work," and it didn't happen. It was Carlos, but it really wasn't doing anything because again, like you said, they got beat up by the Chargers and just got knocked out. Then he goes over to Jacksonville. So you got there's a little bit of light at the short term tunnel, like you said. I, I we don't know. There's some talk that maybe you know the the some people want to sit on one side of the room and say, all right, well they brought in Carlos because they know Leonard Fournette's really hurt and they you know could potentially go on IR and all that stuff. I mean, at this they point, haven't put him on you IR. Have, yet. It has to be a thought in the back of your mind, but like like you just said, Jay Wayne, they ha- hasn't happened, and I would Im- imagine that if they were going to, they would have. I think for the whole thing, obviously the Jags are playing NFL football, and they're only one game out of their conference. I mean, out of their division right now and they don't care about our fantasy team so i'm with you casey i think when leonard fornell's healthy this is i think if when he gets back if he gets back anytime soon i think it's going to be the leonard fournette show again but i think meantime, you'll have a two or three week window where you're still getting a decent amount of hide while fournette's back just to ease him back in i don't think it's going to go 100 percent. well in the meantime it's a great move for the jags like you said unfortunately this week they go against philadelphia and they got a great front, so not the easiest team to run on. But then they got a decent couple of, you know, get to give. De- they got Indianapolis the next week, which is, you know, the Colts are still the Colts. They have a buy. Uh, no, Pittsburgh, Buffalo. Um, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The buy, the buy. Yeah, after Philly, the buy. <coughs> yeah. And then week ten they go to the Colts. My bad. So they got Eagles buy. So not the best thing, but you know. It's so it's it's it, the the philosophy of the team is yeah. there. It's a ground they want to run it. Right. And we got and, and I'm about to put you on spot well, here. For, we won't to go talk quite about there the, yet. Okay. Well, when you talk about the Jags and what they want to do, yeah, there's a reason why they brought in Carlos. Right. Hyde. And, and I mean, I, I guess I'm looking at it as, you know, yeah, maybe they did bring in Carlos because Leonard is is a little more hurt than than 
they wanted to lead on. But I think it's a good move in their part because a Carlos is a semi high. I think he's I don't know if he's sixth or seventh highest paid back in the league yeah. right now. Uh, you're going to assume half of that contract for the next year and then you can do whatever you, want. you can dump them next year if you want to with basically no penalty or you could hang on to him, pay him a little more than you should be paying a backup um, and have a good backup that, you know, you can lean on so and, and hand it to him again. 20 times a game. Uh, so I don't think I think it was a great move in general, just talking about what the Jaguars kind of were doing with the move and, and kind of where it could end up. I mean, it definitely hurts some some TJ Yeldon stock probably for the rest of your season he's not going to be super startable unless you're in a pinch um you'll be a zero hit against the cap to cut carlos next year that's what i'm saying so i think it's a win-win for them uh financially i I don't know if they i'm pretty sure i don't know what their cap situation is but i think they're kind of on the higher end of cap strap so i don't think they would be hanging on to carlos but uh it's a great move for them i mean let's say Fournette after the buy you could be all the way up to week 15, week 14, where Carlos is very usable. Yeah. I mean, in that's fantasy. And, and But for the Jaguars, it could be they don't like you said, they don't give a shit about your fantasy team. So I think it's a good move for them. They, they obviously have Yeldon in there who's isn't necessarily fantasy wise. He's well showing up for you, but he's not doing what the Jaguars need their running back to do and what they took Leonard Fournette to do with. Right. This team. Right. Yeah. Ta- it, he's not he's not Fournette. I mean, he's. He's good in space, good at catching the ball, and but he's not Leonard Fournette. And so if you're a Carlos Hyde owner, unfortunately, as a Carlos Hyde owner, you're really, really hoping that Leonard Fournette stays out. Right. That's really what you're looking for. Um, and hoping that Carlos goes – they cut him and he goes somewhere else next year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, on the long-term situation. Uh, absolutely. Because you definitely don't want him to just be the backup for Leonard Fournette getting, you know – well, 20 or 30 percent of the run this is how quickly things change in fantasy football and especially with you know you got a running back that was on fire for and in a really good situation a couple of weeks ago and now you don't like uh 20 you know nine, 98 yards and two touchdowns and the browns are like hey we got a quarterback now look at what look, watch us roll mm-hmm. and now you're like man if i really wish i could get back to that you know close to that late first round pick i could have got a month ago yeah you know i've seen some people on twitter being like hey i think it was jeff rob robert robbie jeffries was tweeted out a month ago and he's uh, you know hey you should be selling your carlos side it's like well we a month ago we were like you could you you should sell your carlos side or you should borrow buy your carlos side depending on what position you're Mm -hmm. in you know and it's just like it's if you could find a couple of weeks here where there's no leonard fournette and the value goes back up on carlos side i got no problem cashing out I'm not. I see. I'm. I'm not cashing out on. I'm just gonna ride him out for the rest of the year and let him go somewhere else. Most likely. I mean, I don't. I don't see the Jaguars holding on and paying him a decent amount of money. What next year would cost them, um, running back wise, when they could probably just draft another running back in the third round or whatever. And you know. Yeah, but I, they, I understand they what replace. you're saying there. I feel like a third rounder might be more valuable than what even if they're cash strapped. Even even when you quote unquote say a highly paid running back, they're really not getting paid that much compared to pretty much everybody but else I mean, on the for, team. But but for the rest of the position to, to you already have one guy you spent a first round draft pick on and you know, you can spend that money elsewhere rather than tying up, you know, five million five, almost five, four points. Yeah, I see but, Carlos Hyde. But but let's but the reason they brought in Carlos Hyde still plays next year because sure, sure, Fournette, sure. And Fournette has not been the beacon but of I th- health. I think this just happened and, to be the perfect storm for them where you can pay Carlos two and a half million for the rest of the year and then you can let him go with almost no penalty next year. And you still have a chance to win the and division. You still have a chance to do what you're doing and you can get your all star running back healthy. It doesn't matter how long it takes now. Yeah. Um so I, I think that's a win-win for them. And I don't really see any reason why they would hang on to him. You know, obviously you could say, well, Leonard Fournette might, may or not. But I think you could spend a draft pick or pick somebody up a free agent and pay him a fraction of what you're paying uh, Carlos Hyde. And it's a dollar and cents league at the end of the day. And, oh, yeah, you're right. And uh, so I'd, I'd be holding my Carlos and hoping that he goes somewhere else. I'm not going to sell him for pennies on the dollar because he went somewhere else. His value got a little hurt. But when you tell us why the, the Jags picked up Carlos Hyde and why they really need Carlos Hyde right now to do the things what they want want Leonard Fournette to be doing for their team, right. that's why I'm like it would wouldn't surprise me at all if they if he does well for sure. them to roll him back and just have two good power backs next year on the roster. Obviously, quarterback move, you know, to be determined Mm -hmm. whether or not Blake Bortles is a quarterback or not. We're in a situation right now as a Jacksonville Jaguars team that your foundation of your offensive philosophy is not playing. Yeah. And now your team's in turmoil. Well, before we move to the next step, Jay, when you got anything on on Carlos here? 
Only, well, it'd be a $16 million dead cap hit if they cut Bortles in 19, so that's kind of a bummer for them. Um, But, yeah, I mean, my initial reaction was this is kind of a bummer for Carlos Hyde's long-term outlook of the season, right? But that just depends on whether Fournette comes back or not. They haven't put him on IR yet. I could see them putting him in IR. I could see them seeing how these next of these rest of these games go and seeing if he can come back after the bye. I don't. I don't necessarily I mean, that's know. Also, I guess that's a possibility that we didn't kind of. If they maybe they lose another two or three games before they think Fournette's healthy and hide, they just run hide the rest of the season and say, "Hey, we're not going to play Fournette." True. Well, they're right. this far into the season and they're still uh, as bad as it. You know, week two they were the best team in the world, and now because they beat the Patriots, mm-hmm. and now they're like you know what they're. Fighting in the three locker and, room. Three and four. They're fighting in the locker room. Right. They were three and one, and now mm. they're three and four. Nobody wanted to see the Jaguars. Exactly. We were Nobody like, oh, they're not going to Kansas play. City. This yeah. is about to be a fire matchup. Right. Nobody wanted wasn't. to play them. And but and now they are, you know, fighting in the locker room, but only one game because of that AFC South is so crazy. Right. They are only one game out of the division. Right. Which is I mean, but they have they dropped Calais they Campbell dropped with two the, big ones to quote, the Titans and the Texans in the last two weeks, which aren't isn't good. True. Um, but he is 28 years old, so he's he's going to be 29. He's going to be 29 next year, right? Sure. Which is you start you start losing value as a running back, no matter who you are at that age, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, maybe you go see what the Fournette owner would, might pay you for Carlos Hyde right now, because he's probably I don't think like going to be enough. No, no. It's well, probably I mean, not may, well, it could be maybe, depending on maybe the, if their if team. A, maybe if he's in a dog fight and if, trying to stay alive, stay afloat, and Fournette's he, been the guy who's been this linchpin of not being able to sust, you know sustain but, running back points. Sure, maybe. Would you, you know, move so, him for a two? No, hell no. No, I wouldn't want to. You got to give me at least a one for me to give you Carlos Hyde. I don't think you get because a one. I think next year there, he's going to be very, very startable wherever he ends up and he'll probably be startable there's a chance he'll be startable for the rest of the season this right. week, this year and those he'll probably get three or four uh more weeks of a of a window here for some decent run if you're a four net owner do you give up a first to go get carlos i mean i wouldn't but no i, do. I would i would See, give that's up a, the beauty of this game would you give up a two casey's to go not get selling him for a one and he wouldn't give up a one for him that's exactly I'm just why not gonna, like i don't i don't well he might sell I feel him like for you're a one. just mortgaging a lot to, mm-hmm. to, I mean, but at the end of the day, like Carlos could help you next season. So uh, it's not a terrible move if you think that bringing in Carlos, keeping your team afloat with that other run with the points that Carlos is going to give you is going to get you into the playoffs. Then and when Fournette comes back, you think you have a chance of just beating people up. Then sure. I mean, I guess I, I'll, I'll give up a one basically all day to chase a chip if I think that's what's now I will. I will say that i can see yes if you got if you're if you're contending and you can like not contending but like basically if you're on pace for the playoffs right now and you got leonard fournette on the on the bench i could see giving up a garrett like basically your things would have to go absolutely sour in a hurry outside of your leonard fournette unhealthiness to miss the playoffs because i wouldn't want to give up like a you know top six first rounder but like yes if you can Get a get a uh, insurance policy on your Leonard Fournette piece, and then either next year, you know, you, you probably s- have you, a playable you, at least RB two. Next year, you either have a a, a a you still have an insurance policy, and at worst case scenario, he stays on the Jags, and your Leonard Fournette is backed up mm-hmm. with a very the best backup in the league, or Carlos Hyde goes somewhere else, and Outside you got to carry on Johnson right, and now you got yeah, and now you got two starting running backs. You know what? Until one yeah. of them does something, you know, gets hurt or whatever. Yeah. So I can see that, but I I wouldn't be wanting to. If I'm if I'm if Leonard Fournette is the reason my team is two and five, I'm sure as hell not going to give up a first and sure. miss the playoffs and have Carlos Hyde on my team and not have my pick one four or whatever it is yeah. in rookie season. Hundred percent. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest thing, I and mean, maybe this isn't the direction you want to take this conversation here, but to me, with this Carlos Hyde trade, the biggest takeaway for me is that. I would go buy Leonard Fournette. No, I don't have a problem with 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 there because I think that could jettison into the latter part of this conversation here. But I, I agree with you hundred percent. I I would I'm I mean I've been trying I'm sending to get out Leonard offers Fournette. For, I've been for sending out offers, and now I just feel like this is even more. Sure, I I got no problem hit. trying to get Fournette. Like I've if I'll send over the first in a hurry just to try to get things started on seeing if the, the Fournette owner will come off of them. I, I would, yeah, all day. 
Uh, this is. That's, I don't think that's going to do it. I don't but think. It, but I, uh, I'd, I'd give up a one and a two. Perpetuate the conversation. I throw in a player. I think a one and a two is a, a decent start at this point. Obviously, a one would have never got you a conversation with Leonard Fournette a month, six weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so now, you know, things get a little wild and crazy. And some people, I mean, I'm a, I'm a mover and a shaker, and I like to make deals, but I'm not going to sell low on my high dollar asset mm-hmm. while he's hurt. Yeah, that's but not, some people would. Exactly. That's not how I roll. Some people are ready to trade the same thing you paid for Rashad Penny for Rashad Penny. But that's so, not selling low. I, well, I mean, but it's not... If you if you're getting a first back for Leonard Fournette, is it really selling low? Where he was, Rashad Penny was never a first, a late end of the first, mid second, or a startup pick. Look, you just sure. pick, you just took sure you, Rashad Penny was fair it, enough. It's not even close to what Leonard Fournette was, six, you know, start in draft season. Yeah, you're fair, fair enough. Could be he was. I mean, Penny was in that like fourth round there for a while. Yeah, but that's it. Sure. It takes two yeah, first rounders. I know. I know. I, know. I got to you. go I got from you. the fourth round to the first round. You're it right. takes You're a right. lot, a lot of cap, a lot of equity. You right, dog. To get up right. there. You right. <laughs> I think that's a fair point, though. I'm definitely chasing some Leonard Fournette and seeing what somebody wants to sell him for if they're ready to unload him because they're just sad he hasn't played a lot and. They could be sad he hasn't played. He's there's injury some, there's, prone. There's, there's a ton of, of hate out there. Hate out there for he him. can't catch the ball. He can like, catch the ball just fine. Now let's no, that's go. The hate. Let's, let's quick. Look, right, that is, that's the hate. There's, let's quickly go through something that we touched on a few months, a few weeks ago, when we were talking about buying somebody, like uh, 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 somebody that's not, well, I think might have been the Dalvin Cook talk or something like that. When we were talking about we, we, to talk about maybe chasing down the cheap Leonard Fournette right now, if you're chasing the, if you're on the heels of making the playoffs. And you have basically, like Casey said, right, we're, with, ta- exactly. we're talking Rashad, Rashad Penny. Penny. Exactly, like Casey can't give up his first rounder next year to buy Rashad Penny in the league where I own him because he's chasing the playoffs, has a chance to make the playoffs, and Rashad Penny might not help him for the next month or six weeks. You got if you're going to buy Leonard Fournette right now, you need to understand that you might not be buying somebody that's going to help you win in the next six weeks. Right, so. Your purchase power, whatever you're giving away, whatever you either, you're trading, is is something that you could be giving away to help you win now. Yeah, you either so, need to be big dick in the whole league, exactly. and be like, I can I can afford to make a move and have him sit on my bench because my I'm I'm just crushing. Yeah, or you probably are on the other end of the spectrum, exactly. and are if, trying to make moves you, to get you, better rebuilding. You could have a really good reloading. team. You could have a really good team. And for instance, the guy who's a Rashad Penny question it was he had Mixon and 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 Dalvin Cook. So those and both multiple of those, other startable. Well, I, yeah, but but I'm, but guys that were hurt yeah, recently, right, so right. It gives you the L's. You still got a really good solid da- dynasty asset, but your team's two and five. So you could have a good team be two and five and be like nowhere. If, you know, you got to look at that playoff picture. If 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 you're some playoff, some leagues have that last spot for the playoffs is going to be a bad team just because the top three beat everybody up. You know that, so it depends on your league whether or not you actually have a chance for the playoffs. But if you're out of it and you can give up something, some aging veterans or whatever, sure. or you know, and you're trying to get after, I don't. There's not a Leonard Fournette coming out of college football this year. You know, obviously he's been hurt, and you can call him injury prone if you want to. But when Leonard Fournette's running, you sure want him on your roster. Yeah, you want him on your fantasy team. So if you can go get Leonard Fournette now, I I don't mind it. But understand what you're giving up in in the position you're going to be in when for the rest of this season, you might not be getting anything out of him. Yeah, no, so I just want to throw that out there 100 percent. i think that's that's accurate all the way um i guess to finish the conversation let's just talk about the f- kind of the football side of this thing and you know just i don't know i we we talk about it a lot off air and and just talking about what leonard fournette means to this team and why they went out and traded for carlos Hyde. just from an x's and o's standpoint like this team is clearly built behind a player that they drafted highly, which some people agree with and some people don't agree with, in Leonard Fournette. And the defense. And the defense. Which that, and that player and the defense went to the coincide. AFC Championship right. game. We're up 10 points on the Patriots for making the Super Bowl last year. Right. And Leonard Fournette, up through all the hate last year of saying everything about terrible things about Leonard Fournette, when they got in that playoff game with the Steelers and Leonard Fournette ran all <laughs> over them boys. <laughs> yes, sir. Got his ankle hurt and came back in and ran all over him some more. Yep. Nobody said a word nope. in those weeks about why you drafted Leonard Fournette and how replaceable the running back didn't was. Didn't hear about it. Didn't didn't hear about anything. Carried him. 
So, should have I mean, won that game. Should have. They, they no, did they, win no, that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The beat next the, game. Well, well, all right. Because the, the way the, the Ben Roethlisberger halftime bomb and, sure. and the bomb. They came air, back. They should have won it twice. Right. And But, you know, that they had that game and then the Steelers were making magic happen. And right. Leonard Fournette was taking them back down the field and winning it all over again. They should have beat the Patriots is what I was trying right. to say. They absolutely should have. And, and I mean, you can show me whatever you want to show me stats wise, analytically, any anything of that nature of, well, here's the splits with TJ Yeldon in there and this is their yards per offensive game and this is they've won and done all this other things. Well, right now, TJ Yeldon is your starting running back and you ain't winning games. And you're fighting in the Y'all locker boys room. You're fighting in the locker room. Your defense is in disarray. I don't think too much has changed. Oh, but Blake they were one fumbled. Of the, it, it, it's Blake's right. fault. It's, I mean, it, it, it is somewhat Blake's fault, but because it's, running it's, back's not but it's there. also Blake's fault because your team isn't doing what your team is supposed to be doing right now because you're supposed to be able to be putting eight, nine guys in the box that worried about what Leonard Fournette is doing and then coming out there and then letting Blake saying, hey, we're going to make Blake Bortles beat us. And Blake Bortles has been able to beat you when it's one on one and it's confident Blake out there right now. It's non-confident Blake out there. And they're, they're saying there isn't a team in this league who's lining up against the Jacksonville Jaguars and watching film and studying and going, hey, Bo, them boys are starting uh, yelling this week. It's going to be a tough one. What are we, we going to do? What are we going to do? How do we stop him? How do we stop that guy? Chin no. strap. Better Th- get Them boys are like, straight. hey, we'll let Yeldon do whatever Yeldon's going to do, and we'll make Blake Bortles uh, beat, us through the air. beat us through the air. And that's you know kind of what their thing is with Leonard Fournette as well. Obviously, you're stacking the box, so you're saying, hey, let Blake beat us, but you're also getting the one-on-ones with yeah, Blake Bortles when there's eight guys in the box. So it's a lot easier for Blake to beat you. The defensive respect gives you that right. Blake Bortles play action, boot out, right. and now he hits somebody in a crosser that's easy, right. and, or he can run with it. Right he can now, do multiple things. Can he, can play, he can throw a pass in one-on-one coverage when it's exactly when there he's is no, confident and the defense is playing well, and he knows he's good to go, and he can hand it to Leonard. And everything right now against the Jags defensively is soft zone. Right. Because they don't have to do anything. They don't have to watch out for anybody. Right. So They're that's not, the problem. Right. Exactly. I mean, again, stats lie, and I hate pointing at stats, and I hate doing all that. And you know, you can say, "Well, this team Numbers is better." Numbers don't lie, though. This is a wasted draft pick for taking Fournette, and blah 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 blah. And look at what they do when Yeldon's in the game. Well, it's a lot different when Yeldon comes in and plays a game, and Leonard Fournette's coming back the next week. It's it's different when Yeldon's your starting back for the next couple of weeks, and you've been in there and see what they're doing with right. Yeldon week in week out. I mean, you just see what they're doing with Yeldon, and then you, right. like I like what you said earlier about it is is after two or three weeks of no no Leonard Fournette, now the things are not working like they used to for for um, the quarterback Bortles, and now it's, you got right. non confident Bortles, right? Instead of one week, well, without what's wrong Leonard, with Blake Bortles? Well, he's the Blake Bortles that you used to know and and hate or love, Leonard however Fournette. you want to get right. And That's garbage non-Leonard. time. Blake has still been good for fantasy, just like T.J. Yeldon has been good for your fantasy team, but he hasn't been. They're not nec- winning games. They're not winning games, and he hasn't been necessarily crushing it rushing. Yeah. Um. I mean, he's got some decent averages here, but he's got some bad averages there. And and when you're not competitive in the game, you got to get away from the running game a little bit. And they've been able to keep the running game close. And I mean, I'm not a stats do lie, but when you want to look at the overall of what happened last year, and these are obviously through 16 games last year. Um, but in 2008, 18 or 2018, they're 20th in attempts. The Jaguars, they're 21st in total yards. They're 23rd, 23rd and average yards per game. They're dead last in touchdowns in 2017. First in yards, first in attempts, ninth in average, uh, per play. So like the 4.3 or what, you know, whatever yeah. tied for second in touchdowns. First in yards per game rushing. like So that's night and day of night what they day. were doing. So you can point to Leonard Fournette and it's 3.7 yards a carry and, and however you want to chop it up, man. But And, and when you're actually playing the game, it matters, it who's, matters who's the guy back there. And you can say, oh, all these talent, the running back's replaceable and this guy's replaceable and that guy's replaceable. I guess the quarterback's replaceable because the, the Eagles won the Super Bowl with a backup. Exactly. Like, so and you no, got you yeah. got to have a good team, and you have to have a good plan, and you have to have a you have to have and good players. Beat Case at, at, Keenum to get there, right? You have to have good players at every position. Like your offensive and defensive lines have to be good, and you have to have good wide receivers, and you have to have good running backs. Like Scheme. A, a, everything needs to be working together, and when it's not, things aren't going well. You're fighting in the locker room. Jalen Ramsey was running his mouth. Now he doesn't have shit to say. Right. Like. And it all works together. Right. Like your spirit, if you when Leonard Fournette's not there and the quarterback's turning the ball over, now all of a sudden the defense is is a nasty. Now all of a right. sudden you're getting beat up by the Dallas Cowboys, which never happens. You, with, get, you know, Cole Beasley's just 
working you. Working y'all boys. Because you Dak Prescott's beating you on RPOs. They're running a high school offense out All there. of that works together. You got your quarterback and your running back and your defense. That's your team. Quarterback hands it to the running back. He gets first downs. We're nasty. Breaks off big runs. He runs over people. The defense is high. Keelan Cole's singled up. He can run faster than right. your guy. I'm going to throw a bomb to him. Blake's bombs have been awesome De- recently De- when he's confident. When the defense is hyped up, there's not a better defense in the league. Right. But right now, the defense is like, well, we know when we go on the field, something's going to bad. It's going to happen because Bortles going to turn it over. We can't hand it to Leonard Fournette. So, again, all this wraps into great move for the for the Jacksonville Jaguars to bring in Carlos Hyde to back up the injured Leonard Fournette because, yes, he is injured, and there's, you know, it's another – it's a soft tissue injury and last year it was an ankle and this and that. And I said it last year. I don't think that he's somebody that big shouldn't be able to move like he does. And his ankle went out on him. But like Casey said, he came back into playoffs, gutted it out after halftime and drug him to that victory over the Steelers. And then they were up 10 in the fourth quarter against the uh, Patriots. And if they go to the Super Bowl, we're not even having this conversation. You know, just because he just just getting into just playing in the last game right. gets you on a whole nother level, even if you don't win. And so, yeah. and now you got unconfident Bortles out there right. on a short leash, gets so, benched. I mean, I'm th- I'm sure you can dredge up stats and put things in my face and say, here, no, see, look at this. Hey, look at this. Hey, no, look at this. No, see, I'm right because this guy matters and running backs don't matter. And it's like not like you can put whatever you want in my face but right now the Jacksonville Jaguars are broken and the first thing I'm pointing to is that Leonard Fournette ain't there yeah, right. and they're falling apart at the seams because nobody's worried about the run game right now from the if Jacksonville Jaguars. If it's not too late to save the just got benched Blake Bortles with a power running game the Jacksonville Jaguars rolled the dice to see. Right. They did what they had to do and they only gave up a fifth round pick to bring in Carlos Hyde and obviously everything can be a little wompy when you bring in sure. somebody mid-season. And we're going to talk but about they're only Mark one Cooper. week away from a bye week exactly the Mark Cooper thing they're only one way one week away from the bye week um, you know so we but, don't know what's going to happen and you, if, if everybody's replaceable if running backs are replaceable just draft one in the third or fourth round look at alva kamara look at look at kareem hunt like they didn't boys just obviously they didn't give up too much to get a running back yeah, but, but look, they well they but, did trade all both of those teams traded up sh- future picks to get those guys. sure but again that's a point in my favor i think mm-hmm. but like you went and got a guy who you know you can hand it to 20 times and on that 20th carry he's better than he was on the first carry you know you don't have that guy in tj yeldon right like tj yeldon is doesn't the guy. get better as and, the and game I'm, goes I'm, on. that's nothing it's not i think tj yeldon's a good player he doesn't like, wear down the defense but he's not a between the tackle, to tackle him. and we know that and if we, i know that the coach on the other side knows that <laughs> like it's just and and tj yeldon's gonna go somewhere and probably flourish as a as a kind of satellite back and and checking in for somebody hell if he went to the san francisco 49ers he'd have a great year yeah he's having a good year uh fantasy points wise when he plays it's just not what the jaguars are trying to do like and it's not how they're built and it's not what they're doing like everything's relevant like just to say because this position's replaceable and that you're upset about they drafted a like come on man like you can argue whatever you want and and yeah Looking back in hindsight, it's 2020 every time. After the Jaguars got smashed by the Cowboys, I didn't hear a single person say, well, the Cowboys should have taken Jalen Ramsey. I don't know why they took Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> yeah. Like, crazy how that... There wasn't a, I didn't see a peep of that on Twitter anywhere. Like, all of a sudden, the Cowboys have a decent secondary. Jalen Ramsey's not the problem of them not having him on the team. Like, yeah. it's just... It's crazy how those things work. The biggest problem the Jacksonville Jaguars have right now is they're going to London in disarray... And they got to go play the Eagles, who just got smoked in the fourth quarter. Right. And maybe Carlos up. won't be the answer in this game. That's what he I'm just saying. got there, and they're yeah, on yeah. London. And yeah. how could he be right. the answer in this game? You just got here a couple of days ago. Now you're flying to London. You have no time to talk about it, plan it out, get in the, get. There's no real practice going on this week because you got to spend a whole day going to London, and now and you got to play against the Eagles team who was shutting out the Panthers in the fourth quarter and then got it snatched from them. So they're about as pissed off as they can be, and they know that they are what, a solid what, unit. What do you call it? What? What you, what you mad? Mad as a mad as a hornet. Mad as a, <laughs> pissed mad off. As, you step on that. If you if you've never been chased by hornets that come out of the ground, those ground hornets they <laughs> are mad. angry. They are mad. They're angry. There's a what reason. Are you stepping on my ground. The, the older I get in this world, I figure out those sayings. They come. They, the boys made that up hundreds of years ago. They wouldn't have made figured, them up if they weren't exactly. for real. Exactly. Mad as a hornet is a real thing because if you accidentally <laughs> stir up those ground hornets, you can be upset. Your you grandpa did. used to say some shit like that for sure. sure. Absolutely did. So it's unfortunate that Carlos Hyde's first game in midweek showing up. Gets to go over there. No, he, he what it was last week he, though. He last play. Thursday. Okay, okay, my bad. He's, He's got, got a week. week. He's got a week. 
But still, a dysfunctional team flies to London playing against a team that's, you know, returning champs, and they're not anywhere close to dysfunctional. And, you know, that's the kind of game where usually the best coaching staff wins. Sure, but I think you're going to see a steady dose of Carlos, and maybe he has 136 yards, or maybe he has 60. <laughs> but You're going to get a steady dose of Carlos. you're going to see some Carlos. Maybe you'll see some it, Cody Kessler, too. At least they're not, like, playing in Philadelphia. They got all – everybody has to go to, to this London. Is, this so is true, and – you know the Jaguars love some London. At least no, that's Conner. true. That's Close, true. almost a home game. Just withdrew his uh, three hundred million on Wembley Stadium, though, or whatever. So he had it was. better pl- place, uh, places for that capital. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like some more mustache, p- mustache, mustache. pomade. <laughs> All right. Anyway, well, we mustache to a break. Uh, I think that <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Must he made that shit up. Mustache, 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 mustache. Like a run, like a run yeah. to a break. You never heard that? I didn't make that up. Yeah, we're no. dashing. That was a stashing. Yeah. You know da- Dasher and Dancer and Prancer? Don't go there. And Rudolph and Vixen. Anyway, I, I think oh. overall, I think this is a great midseason move by the Jaguars to go acquire Carlos Hyde. Much like it's great by us to have a midseason meet. Like, exactly. That was a, you took the words right out of my mouth. Give me the Jason. <laughs> Jesus. So for those of you that are on YouTube, you you heard that little clip there, but we're playing Meatloaf music uh, on the intro and the outro. You won't hear that on YouTube due to copyright uh, infringements. <laughs> He's a huge fantasy football guy, or at least he used to be, which is why we do an ode to Meatloaf every year. Right. He's uh, he's just crushed all the celebrity uh, fantasy football uh, leagues. They won't Boys even won't let, let, him let him in. in. <laughs> and he's he's very adamant about how he's the best. He just goes out there and he tells was on, everyone. He was on the zero QB before anybody was on the zero QB. Right. <laughs> right. You know, if you, if you have two QBs on your team, you're not a threat. <laughs> that's, uh-huh. a, that's a direct meatloaf quote. <laughs> that's a quote. That's a quote. Um, so we love him because he's not only awesome with the fantasy football, but I mean, he's just the, all his music. Well, the first two albums were just fantastic. Amazing. Crushed uh, some acting career. Fight Club. Well, so here's a fun fact. He was in the original production of Hair, mm. uh, but he declined to be in the nude scene. He said that uh, quote, "You get an extra twelve fifty to be in the nude scene, and I didn't need an extra twelve fifty. <laughs> skinny, yeah, <laughs> it's got skinny meat. <laughs> All right, well let's uh, let's let's go out to a break, and I uh, hope you enjoy the meat. Why wouldn't you? We'll be back with more Married to the Game. Woo! I don't think that crack matched the woo, but <laughs> we'll give you a, a last crack for the for the last crack of." Uh, <laughs> Of Say mid-season, crack again. Of meat, mid-season meatloaf. Corey over there is the sensitive ears. He was like, oh. my, uh, my eyes are watering at the moment from that woo. That woo was hot. Well, I got places to go. So. Well, got I, got no, we're all do. revved up with no place to go. That's the thing. But I have places you, to go. But you live here. I do live here. I, this is my house. <laughs> you got nowhere to go. You're right. You're right. You're right. If I leave, I'm taking <laughs> Brad. I'm taking Brad. He's keeping Brad. If we split up, he's keeping Brad. Brad was a gift. Keeping it. We stole him. It was a gift from the gas station in the Indy 500. Hundred running in the Indy 500. That's a commemorative item. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was that that first after show we ever did? Go check that out. I don't remember, but anyhow. Well, we're going to hit the... We saved the best for last. Going to hit you with a little Amari Cooper and some Cowboys. But first... We just had a new Patreon member sh- uh, sign up. Yeah, is this thing live? Are we going? Is this thing live? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> while we were recording here, while we were doing our thing live, we just had a Patreon member join the group here, and uh, our boy Jared pops in here, and it took him 10... He, he signed up, and 10 minutes later, he gets his first question in. I want to read it to you just so you know what's going on over here on the Patreon community page. He says, hey, guys, I'm in a 10-team full PPR league. I wouldn't consider myself in the running for a ship this year, barring some crazy luck. That's a championship. Right. I really need some extra help at RB for next year. I currently have Geis, Mark Ingram, Duke Johnson, Smallwood, Buck Allen, Edo Smith, Chase Edmonds, Wayne Gallman, Chris Warren, and Jalen Samuels on Taxi Squad. I just got offered, uh, I got offered Dak Prescott, Dalvin Cook, Latavius Murray handcuff, and for my Deshaun Watson and two 2019 firsts. I have um, a pretty late first as well. Uh, I, sh- I got two 2019 firsts. One of them should be late, and then mine is maybe in the mid-range towards the end. So do you think that's too much to give for Dalvin Cook and his inj- because of the injuries he had? Also, just so you know, I got Cam Newton, so Watson is my backup. Thanks for any input. So this is something that we're going to be getting on in uh, in the Patreon show. We're going to talk to uh, 
talk about this amongst ourselves with uh with with Jared here hitting him back talking what to up, him about Jared? appreciate the uh the question appreciate the uh stats with the uh league breakdown a little bit and the roster breakdown obviously he didn't go into wide receivers or anything like that but he's talking running backs and he's got a quarterback for a quarterback speaking my backs. language we can talk running backs <laughs> and we can talk first round picks and well it's right up our alley cowboys just traded a first round pick yeah they for did amari cooper Solid, How do you feel about that? Solid transition. It's called the segue. I uh, I like the move for the Cowboys. Uh, Did you have any more? Sorry, Vinco. No, no, that's All that's right. the, I wanted to I wanted our listeners to hear those types of things. We're you know we had again like we said to start the show we had an amazing turnout last week after we you know told you guys that we uh, we needed a little more help over there some some you know five dollar hollers buy us a coffee every month and and a couple people actually uh up gave us their some holler own. they gave us some, we, a bunch of people gave us their holler and we had a couple people that were already hollering at us to up their ante a little bit and right. to show the appreciation Gotta it was definitely a, a it was a big week for us on patreon as far as getting new members of the patreon family over there we're grateful for all you guys and our listeners that haven't yet come over to patreon but uh if, if you're if this is your first time listening to the show what happened last week is we got dm'd about someone was mad at us about basically talking about patreon and and talking too much about it and so what we did was talk even more about it <laughs> and we got rewarded by people coming and joining so sure. sorry buddy but we're gonna have to talk about patreon just a little bit just but a it's little just bit. such a cool a community like you, you, you can you can go check out patreon.com slash the ff dynasty you can see different posts that we've made some of them are public most of them are private what you can't see if you're not a member is the community tab and that's really where people are getting in all their questions and we're creating shows around these questions and so far we've been able to answer pretty much every one of them that won't always be the case but right now we're, we're, we're not able so to. big sure. that we can basically answer everybody's questions. And other people are getting in there that listen to us and are in the, in the same like-mindedness. So and, people and helping people. Answering each other's people questions. People helping people, right. right. That's so what good it is. When he, when he jokes around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, joking around. That, there's <laughs> on that community so page, so jokes. <laughs> jokes around. There's people joking around. We got full discussions going on about roster management. We got serious trade questions as we were reading one earlier. And, you know, that's you're not signing up to talk amongst yourselves, even though we want our Patreon members to join to have a community amongst themselves as part of us with it, you know, together. You know, so like we want people to chime in like they're doing, but you're not just you know, I've heard people say that the other some of the other people that they support through Patreon, they don't have that type of interactiveness that we have been given to our people, and it, it means a lot to us. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Uh, I saw you, uh, saw you on the dance floor out there. Hell of a dancer. <laughs> I told you, I was showing off. It's an <laughs> idiot to show off. <laughs> No, well, I now know I know you're, you're lying. lying. <laughs> now I know you're lying through your teeth. You and me both know I'm a fantastic phenomenal dancer. dancer. Phenomenal dancer. <laughs> phenomenal dancer. <laughs> Anyhow. He was whipping her around. It was he was dancing. It's probably choreographed, but whatever. Whatever. Well, obviously did choreograph, but he's definitely you can't fake those moves. Nah, you can't moves. fake that. He's got rhythm. He's a big guy with good moves. Yeah. Kind of like Amari Cooper. Right. <laughs> Another segue. Second segue. <laughs> Second segue. <laughs> Second try. <laughs> Second try here. Uh so we don't need to talk about Amari Cooper being good, right? That like well, I, when what, you look at his college nominator, I was going to say, could you, could you just read me those real quick? <laughs> I'm pretty sure his college nominator was in the 93rd percentile, and his college dominator is in the 99th percentile. All right, well there it is. I'm jacking off right now. Whoa, we're, we're not too re- much. We're not really way too much. We're not too really, much. And that I'm was, just quoting that was, verbatim. That was uh, that was way too far. That was, that was <laughs> Jay Wayne's best Matt Kelly impersonation. <laughs> that was way but, too far. The college dominator and the uh, breakout age. Is we don't all even I, need to talk about it. What anymore. else do you need to know? What, what, we, we could just move on. We could just end the show. He's obviously. So the how best about ever. how about we segue into his NFL dominator rating? Because when his when his rookie year he got 130 targets, caught 72 of them for a thousand yards, six touchdowns. His second year he comes back with 132 targets, a better catch rate, catches 83 of them, 1150 yards, five more touchdowns, and he's doing things that nobody's ever done at the, the wide receiver position at his age. So that by the a, age of 22, he's got two Pro Bowls under his belt too. Right. And 155 catches. That's quick math. On but my now part. he's no good. It was made easy though. Seven and eight. Everybody knows that's 15 and two and five is three. 155 catches. Right. I, I'm 
agreed. And I mean, he, yes, you can With point the to math the, you can point to the draft. <laughs> you can point to the drops. You can point to whatever you want, whether you like Amari or not like Amari. Most and, drops and, since he's entered the league of any wide receiver. But he's up. But th- in those two seasons, he was the best receiver ever to grace his presence in the league <laughs> up, up until uh, right. Odell had come in, and, and I think Jarvis uh, also was. Well, Odell started it. He was in his 2014, but he was a little older. He wasn't his. It, right. Amari's thing was his age. How young he was. Right. And sure. Odell's thing was just first year in the league. Sure. Amari's still, He's. this is his fourth year. My man's 23 years old. 24. He's 24. Just turned 24, 24 in June. Yeah. A young 24. Bill Polian said he's uh, still serviceable at his age. Young man's like 24. 24. He's mm-hmm. a young man's 24. Anyway, so you, for reference, he's still younger than Kenny Galladay. Right. So you can point to the drops and if you don't like him because a you may have drafted him kind of high or you really liked him and he hasn't performed for you and over the last two years when you expected him well the third year will break out or the this year where he was going to be really good you can point to many things the drops or whatever but i mean any guy who goes from having 10 targets to one or two or zero a game is is going to struggle you can't say that you know, this guy isn't talented. He's not a very good player. Uh, if you give him the ball and you give him his touches, he's probably going to go to the Pro Bowl. Um, no, literally, he had two targets through two weeks. Right. And then in week three against Cleveland, he goes 11 targets for 128 yards on eight catches and a touch. And then the next week, he gets two catches on five targets. And then the next week, he has 10 targets, caught all 10 for a buck 16. And the next week, he has one catch on three targets. Right. Like there's, I've never seen as much up and down usage without somebody. Obviously, he got the concussion and against the Rams. Well, hold on, because I think you're reading those backwards. That was he got the concussion against the Seahawks. Oh, right? I'm reading them upside down. I'm my bad. Yeah, I was looking at a different stat and I was like, "What? He played Cleveland in week yeah, two? Good, good catch, Jay. Shout man. out to I, the dyslexic people. Out right, there. right. Yeah. I read yeah. those stats by in reverse order. My bad. The, yeah, he got concussed last week against Seattle, not against the Rams in week one. That's my good catch. Good catch. My bad. But regardless, your point is still valid. It's it's baffling the back and forth um, target share that he was getting. Like, right. How are you gonna go roast Denver secondary for ten for ten, and then get one target the next week or three targets it was like, it's just the usage is yeah is out weird and uh, who knows what was going on over there and but in, regardless we don't need to talk about yeah. whether or not amari cooper is good or not we are all major amari cooper amari cooper respecters we've always liked amari cooper i'm glad I, you didn't say truther there i know I that's where you were i going. know solid Ex- respecter know. uh and so i've i've been wanting him to get traded but from the Raiders, here you know? it comes. Here it comes. But I mean, like now he's in Dallas. Yay! <laughs> like this is awesome. Question mark? Because Dallas. Dang it! Emoji. You know? Confused emoji. I guess it's cool. I guess anywhere is better than this. What he was doing. Uh, you are, but at this point, you're like it is Dallas. But now you got to use the crutch. They gave up a first, so now they got to target him. Sure. But he's got to learn the playbook, which he's come out and said is. High school playbook. Way too easy <laughs> right. to learn. So I don't I don't think this is like obviously we want we wanted the trade for Amari Cooper. Everybody wanted the trade for Amari Cooper. Um and, and yeah, you could see the Colts. Well, yeah. I don't I don't think Dallas yeah, to the Colts would have been awesome. That's what for, I'm saying. for sure. <laughs> um but I just I don't know how much I don't know. I don't know how good Amari Cooper trade to Dallas will will be for him. Right. Maybe for the first couple of weeks, you've seen it with Josh Gordon, kind of how they've kind of figured it out uh, his, o- over the last couple of weeks. And his snap rate skyrocketed, but sure. to get there, he couldn't get any targets because he didn't know the playbook. And there's been much more difficult playbook there's been, over there. There's significant uh, disadvantages and advantages to either side of Josh Gordon and Amari Cooper and the different uh, trades and how they've they've gone. I think you got a Patriots playbook that's much more difficult. Sure. And and a uh, Cowboys playbook that is seemingly I don't know, but Amari Cooper seems to think it's it, he can learn it fairly easily and he's not worried about it. Multiple times um, he said the word easy. Uh, yeah, a lot of easy. So advantage, which might be part of the Cowboys' problem. Advantage Amari <laughs> Cooper, but then you got you know Josh Gordon and the quarterback, which is Tom Brady. Advantage Josh Gordon. Yeah, right. You yeah. have the room which is filled with Belichick's and five Super Bowl rings and people who get it. Advantage. Advantage uh, Patriots and Josh Gordon. But then I think you have, uh, obviously Josh Gordon has been and waiting for to be this one of the better receivers in the league, but it just 
nothing has kind of all clicked and, and came together at the same time for different reasons than Amari Cooper isn't clicking and coming together. Maybe the most part because he wasn't on the field. Right. Uh, well, and and because like Amari Cooper just seems like when he was coming out of college, he was a, a guy who was, he was a character high, high character, high character, uh, hard break, worker. Obviously, the high breakout motor, age. High is, motor. Obviously, the breakout age is, <laughs> is extremely high because he came in and and so he was young. crushing at a at a young age. So you would think that you know, head wise, smart wise, maybe Amari Cooper check mark to Josh Gordon's. Maybe not not saying that Josh Gordon isn't a smart guy, but maybe just isn't quite in the same. Uh, realm of football savvy and smarts and and wherewithal as a football IQ, is. football uh, IQ yeah and i'm not could and, be and, and, lower right we don't know right, we don't know i don't speculate I'm not, I'm not gonna leading the say witness anything, but leading the witness just to kind of put those two things together and coincide and you've seen it take what four weeks now josh gordon had a pretty decent week this week yeah um and he's had he's he's injured he was injured via right. the trade uh, so that could be part of it. Maybe he's not 100% and doesn't have an explosion back. Good point. You're getting two weeks of Amari Cooper on a bye for the Raiders and now on a bye uh, for the Cowboys, which bonus for Amari to get healthy from the concussion, bonus for Amari to help learn this, quoting him, easier, easy-ish playbook. Simple. Yeah. Um, and something he's been doing his whole life as it was something that he said and, you know, so I don't see that as being too much of a disadvantage, but it might be a couple of weeks before Amari is completely acclimated. And, you know, you, I don't think anybody ever is like, oh, there's a midseason trade and I'm so excited for the guy who got traded without being like, there's got to be a couple of weeks of lead time here before my guy's ready to yeah. ascend where I think he is. Now, do I think that Amari Cooper is going to be that elite wide receiver one that people were drafting him as a couple of years ago, like that that third or fourth receiver off the board or even 10th receiver off the board probably not this season no not with Dak and not with that offense right it's not made to do that but I think you could see some nice wide receiver two numbers out of Amari for the back end of this season and you'll slowly saw him you know yeah they got they paid the first round pick for him uh, so you would like to think that they would feed him some targets um, so I'm thinking hopefully you see like five to seven, eight targets a game for a guy like Amari Cooper. Maybe it's not quite that off the rip, but I think it will get somewhere around there. And hopefully you're hoping for more of a 10 yeah, target I was kind gonna of day say, for I, him. But to be realistic over the next couple of weeks, you would think kind of five to seven would be fantastic and could easily put him in a wide receiver two category because of his skill set. Um, and then what it really does for this team and the thing that I'm most excited about, I'm not excited if I have Amari Cooper, like obviously he's out of that situation um, and into a new situation and he's hopefully maybe excited about it and you didn't really know what was going on in, in uh, Oakland. That was a very strange situation, especially the way it all ended. We'll get to that in a second, but I think it's just a huge upgrade for this offense in general. Like you give Dak somebody who can be that alpha number one, throw the ball to it makes the defense loosen up a little bit and not be able to necessarily stack eight guys in the box. You can try that for a minute and try to go solo on Amari here if you want to. Or you can double Amari and you can actually get usage out of these wide receiver twos and threes that your team's filled with. Exactly. Um, and I so I, I think that's the biggest benefit. I think Zeke benefits. I think Dak benefits. I think these other receivers around him should all benefit. The offense as a whole should be able to grow off of Amari. And in the long term... Hopefully, closer to the end of the season, you'll start seeing Amari also benefiting from this move. I agree with that. I, I mean, I don't think there's any way this doesn't help the offense. I mean, obviously, there's people out here complaining about the Cowboys giving up the first round pick. And I mean, you can say that if nobody else wanted to give up a first that they paid too much, but you these are the same people that were complaining that the Cowboys didn't take a wide receiver in the first round this year. Yeah, you could have had Calvin so, Ridley. Yeah, you 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 were the, okay. You're, the, a whole bunch of people were just complaining that the Cowboys didn't use a first round pick on a wide receiver. Now they take one to still only twenty four years old and he's two time Pro Bowler. Right, like Jason just pointed out, Kenny Galladay. One year younger. He's 25. Yeah, he's old. About to be 25. Yeah, and we're so excited with Kenny Galladay because he's young, right? Right. So it's all it's all relative, and there's to each his own perspective on how they want to try to spend something. If nobody else will give up a first, then, yeah, maybe the Cowboys should have been trying to play the 2-2s game or whatever. But, like, it's, they going into a bye, probably were up a gun up against a gun because my, my perspective is 
you should have tried to get him a couple weeks ago. Obviously, the best time to do it is going into a buy. So they were like, well, if we don't do it now, maybe we don't do it. But again, trade deadline closing. Same in. thing we were talking. Yeah, the the same thing we we're talking about with the Jags. And if it's NFC East is wide open, right? That's so what, the that's Cowboys what, yeah. are like, hey, we got to make a move here. And yeah, you might have paid. You, there's a potential you could have got him for less. But who knows if the deal gets done? And you and the Cowboys don't necessarily know that somebody else isn't really knocking on the door of course after the trade happens everybody's like well we weren't going to give up a first but somebody could have been knocking on the door right. to, hindsight's 2020 you never again. know and the, and and as and, and as the cowboys they don't know either so well, they, what, and what a lot of fans and media they want to point to that oh well jerry already has done this this twice now and when he traded for uh roy williams roy williams and um joey galloway joey galloway and it didn't work out and you know maybe maybe it doesn't work out but He's at least making it, taking a shot here, and you can say whatever you want about Jerry Jones, but at least he's shooting his gun here. And right. there is the, the the division is wide open, and this offense does need a guy like this. And and, and maybe this catapults you uh, further down the line, and uh, you get to again see for the next year if if you got a guy that you want to be your cornerstone of your franchise, which is what this you could have Zeke and Amari, and if they're balling out with this offensive line, and and you see some growth from Dak. It's a great trade. Well, you also get a chance to see Dak have a chance, have somebody to throw to. I heard somebody right. say Ryan that. Ryan Grant. Made was a it great Ryan point. Grant saying yep. if you have to make a decision whether or not really soon you're going to pay Dak, and you might as well give him some Good quality. Point. You got to get you got to get a quality see guy for got. him to throw to to see if you want to put more money in Dak going forward. And then like you you know the Cowboys are going to spend that first round pick on a wide receiver next year. And then he's going to be a rookie, right? And then he's going to be a mini and rookie. Maybe camps. he's not any good. And maybe right. he's not. Maybe he's not as good as Amari Cooper. So Miles maybe White, he's never any good. Maybe he I never have, catches a thousand yards in a season. Exactly. I have no problem with them giving up the first round pick next year. No way. to get Amari Cooper this year, have a chance in a wide open MC, NFC East, and 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 that means a playoff berth. And anything can happen. Do does anybody think the Cowboys are going to go win championship? No, but their defense is a lot better than people give them credit for. Sure, they have a good running game. They got a quarterback who doesn't really turn it over a whole lot and can get first downs with his legs and it and wouldn't we've, and we've seen him be a pretty good quarterback with options to throw to right and like you said all, now Alan Hearns who's nobody to speak of goes doesn't have to be somebody to speak of and Michael Gallup now, can now can, Michael Gallup can come along a little bit and not have and to Cole be Beasley can the guy that thing. everybody's if Amari can get Cole Beasley's targets then I'm good with this trade and right. Cole Beasley right. Cole Beasley can yeah exactly Cole Beasley can move to chains he just doesn't need to be your focus and your passing right. game I would like to see Cole Beasley get in the end zone so we could steal his fing- uh, the uh, Jazz hands. Sure, he, he got in the end zone against the Jags twice. Did I think did did a had a had a dance. Yeah, he, he crushed it. Did he? Oh, I missed the dance. Yeah, I mean, I I I don't. You can, of course, everyone wants to sit back and and criticize and or 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 love it either way. But I've heard mostly criticism. Mostly about criticism. What's going How on? How horrible! About. I like the trade. I think I think it's a great it's a great move. Like you got to do something. Shoot, like I said, shoot your shot. Do something. And at this you point, missed one hundred percent of the shots this, you never take. At this point, it's a, right. it's a really, really good move for the Raiders as well. Right, I think because as obviously the building's burning down and people are jumping out the window. You might as well get a first round pick on the way out. Yeah, I don't have a problem I with guess. it from the Raiders. I mean, they you, got four first rounders. If, I don't like the way they're handling it. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily like oh, the way that's they're not handling about it either. That. But I'm just saying, you got another first. Now you got tons of first round picks and you you're, got lots of capital. Yeah, and, but, and next on, year's a week draft class. It's all about the 2020 well, class. I mean, there's ton, there's some good wide receivers coming I'm out. Just kidding. And, and, and who who the hell knows what's going to happen in the 2020 or 2019? It's all about the next year. Though. Uh, it always is. But who knows what's going to happen in the 2019 draft class? And on top of that, like you're you were you're not paying Khalil Mack, and you're not paying Amari Cooper on the next go around. You just cleared his picking up his fifth round option, and now you know maybe you don't end up paying Derek Carr either. So now all of a sudden you got tons of money and tons of draft picks. I mean, do I love the way what they're doing, and do I love how they're doing it? No, not necessarily. But Dr- Gruden's got complete autonomy of what's going on. This he's is- got ten years and a ton of money to do whatever he wants to do. I don't think he's going to have a full ten years, but no, I mean me not neither. not if he doesn't turn right. it around within two or three years of being in Vegas, he won't. But. This frustrates me because I told myself. I was going to do better. I can remember exactly where I was when I heard this, but I cannot remember which podcast it was that told me this. They there was no chance the Raiders could were ever going to pay Khalil Mack because they said Mark Davis is not that rich. Right. Like he's way. Did you hear this? Well, part? I read on Roto World. He's, he's way he's way. One of the, he's the poorest quote unquote yes, NFL. Ex- owners. Okay, exactly. I don't remember who said this, but he there. W- 
basically when you give if you give a give big old contract like that and let's say you guarantee like 80 million or something like those big defensive guys get you have to put a healthy percentage of that into an escrow account to guarantee that that money is going to be there because you guaranteed you were going to pay him so mark davis can't afford to hand to put 50 million into a bank account that he can never touch again plus be able to pay the rest of that 30 i'm just using even numbers here you know so like that's kind of where it was was he doesn't have he's he's the he's the poorest rich guy in the room and he doesn't have the money to pay these guys and that's kind of where this was going and it's deflating for the franchise because if you can't keep up you, you it's, gave it's all, a, they, they gave all their money to John. This Gruden. is not the Oakland A's. You can't. Re, this ain't how this works in yeah. the NFL. I mean, obviously, parity is awesome, and you can be bad one year. Every what is it? Five or six teams make don't make the play. Or new, five to new, new teams. teams make the playoffs yeah. every year. I mean, this is great, but if you don't have the money to keep stars, you're not going to be good and good for long. So that, I just want. I wish I could give somebody yeah, credit. I, I don't want to. I don't. I love, don't remember. I don't love that they it. traded Khalil Mack away. I don't love that they traded Amari Cooper away. But if that's what your plan is, and that's kind of what your plan was all along then i'm you know i'm not that bet, upset about it oh, I bet i'd you much could go, rather sign khalil mack you got to sure. be able to get to the passer i bet you could go you sure get, but i mean if it's if, if you're gonna pay him that much money and it's gonna be three years before you're relevant you're kind of pissing away that true that exactly money that you're no doubt and if you can get two first rounders to not right be, you can't let him walk in free agency right you're not gonna let him walk so might as well get the twos and that's what i mean for amari if you can't pay amari because it won't be long, next year this time you're going to be looking at paying him a lot of money and the people that say he's not any good are the same people that says you got to pay him a lot of money soon so like obviously you know he's good enough to demand a decent contract so i i like it for the raiders and i like it for the cowboys and the people that say the cowboys pay too much it's all like I it, mean, you pay first Amari, of all you pay a Amari little premium to your, get a player amari could be your your number one receiver for the next six years and and completely dominate like yeah there's that, that that's not even close to out of the realm of possibilities agreed and you and let's not talk do you, do you really want me to go down the list of the first round wide receivers that are no good right I actually made a list of that like the last three years of that's the what i'm saying like that's you could buy you could spend money you could spend that first round pick months from now that cannot help you win the division now and it could be a bad player. Josh Doxson, Corey Coleman, Brashad Perriman, Devontae Parker, uh, Kevin White. And, and, and half of those are injuries, and it's not about the player. And I just like, I mean, Kevin uh, Casey will talk about all day long, and he's absolutely right. The position in the – you can't help who drafts you. You can't help which offensive coordinator you're looking at. Look at Jared Goff with the Rams now versus when the uh, – when, um, Fisher, look at, Fisher look at Robert out. Woods with the Bills, Bills and with the Rams. Yeah, yeah. Look at it, Brandon Cooks right now. Like he was, nobody wanted Brandon Cooks. He's crushing it. Like Cooper Cup, everyone shat on Cooper Cup. If, if he went somewhere else, everyone would probably be like, "See, I told you so." He's but ran he, us four seven four forty. But he went to the Rams. Yeah. And if Coop, now it's like shut your mouth. Now Cooper nobody Cup's cares what him. his forty second right. yard dash was. Exactly. If Cooper Cup would have been drafted by the Raiders, you wouldn't even know his name anymore. Back to this point, I was trying to make. I couldn't get in there. Sorry, Jay bet, Wayne. I bet the Raiders Floor could, could uh, borrow some money from somebody. I'm, I'm sure that somebody would give the damn Raiders some money to keep some damn players around. Uh, yeah, I bet they like could figure that out. But the Las Vegas will give them as much money as they need. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so the fact that out there a couple of years, that Davis is is broke or poor. Ah, not, not not buying it, but oh, you got to buy that part. But yes, I agree. I can when buy I heard it to it, an extent. I thought the same thing. I was like, well, shouldn't you get a loan from some one of your buddies and then give them a partial interest in the right. team? And so when you are, if That's you can they, get good, you know your value, in Gruden. right? You know your you know your value goes up when you start winning, right? The boys are you like, you this, make, thing, this thing's gonna fold up in five years. Let's give them ten years. We'll give them part of the team. <laughs> you, you think you think you you think Robert Kraft's net worth hadn't tripled since Brady and Belichick came around and started winning Super Bowls? Like that's how this works. Stuff, somebody gave them the boys the Patriots. They're like, here, you want them? You can have them. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are awful. <laughs> anyway. So what do you, uh, we're, we're really up against it here. This is going to be the longest free show in a while. Uh, but I feel like we should put some value here to, to Mari Cooper. I know you were saying off air that if you're not a big Amari Cooper believer, that maybe you should sell right now. Right. And then obviously, much like we're talking, I talked about Rashad Penny to lead this thing off. I believe in Amari Cooper. I'm not going to be the guy who's trying to sell Amari Cooper or ever was trying to sell Amari Cooper. Right. I've always been, uh, I've, I've saw, I did my evaluation I like Amari Cooper. If he could just get in the right situation and be consistently targeted, I think he'll be a pro bowler year in, year out. Uh, but if you're that guy who hates uh, Amari Cooper, maybe this thing isn't 
isn't great through the rest of the season, maybe he's more of like that wide receiver three, fringe wide receiver two for this for the rest of the season. But does really help the Cowboys out because regardless, I think it helps this offense. You gotta maybe, worry about him. Maybe Cooper. fantasy points wise, it's not the best the best ever. So right now, I feel like you're at an, an uptick of value and his name's in a lot of people's mouths, and there could be a lot of things going a lot of different ways. So if you wanted to get rid of him, I think now's the time to capitalize on if if you're not into him to maybe try to capitalize <laughs> not into him selling uh the amari stock i mean i i can see that you should yeah maybe hold on and see what he does but it could be inconsistent like it is now and then he's right back to well let's just say let me let me before we get off of amari cooper he we talked about the two good years he had to start and then last year before so this year's been bad last but, year well, i know wait dear, I, I, I know but last this year has been two games of wide receiver what like 10 targets, 11 targets, called everything, came his way, awesome. And Probably a couple was games, the wide receiver number one. A couple games of awful. The actual first one. A couple games of awful. But then last year was the season where we said, every somebody even in the Oakland Raiders De- locker room. I think Derek room, Carr said, if any other receiver or most any other receiver was playing with what Amari Cooper was dealing with last year, they wouldn't have played. He wouldn't even have been on the field. Right. Which would have been good for your roster on your lineup because you wouldn't have had that sit-start problem with Amari Cooper every week because it was terrible having him in your, on your, in your starting lineup not doing well. Not to mention Derek Carr. Broke also, his back. Also injured. Right. He broke his leg and then he broke his back and all that good stuff. So I just, it's, we are only halfway through his fourth season. The first two were Pro Bowls doing things that nobody's ever done before at his age. The third one, he could have, just a male would, he should have been on the IR, sounds like. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know exactly what was wrong with him, but I've, I've did, I read somewhere that was a, a big, quote from somebody on that team saying that, most other people wouldn't have been on the field playing with what Amari Cooper was dealing with. So her, Which hurt that all speaks year. to whether or not he's dedicated to the game and, and playing tough. this game and, and wanting to So be. hurt all year, and then this year, awful. Not to mention Derek Carr's back injury. Awful game, right. awful game, great game, awful game, awful game, great game. And it, the awful games were not lack of – if you got 10 targets and two catches – Maybe something's up, right? But right. if you got three targets and one catch, it's not and your just fault. the whole like we I, we alluded to it when we were talking about how the trade went down. Like just the whole way that Gruden takes the guy off the practice field, doesn't say anything to the team, doesn't even address him. Right, basically, These players find out on their phones. Right, I mean, just the whole situation was weird. And maybe Amari was who I don't know what the hell was going on over there. Nobody does. Right, I mean, so, not a, not any of us anyway. So, so it's just I don't a, have sources. A, sort of a weird situation. Yeah, uh, but hopefully. Obviously, you're in Dallas now, so the situation could get even weirder. But you would hope that you paid this guy. You've seen, at times, this X receiver in this offense get peppered with targets, sure. a la Des Bryant, seeing plenty of targets for a while. And then while you not saw... Not ever with Dak, though, really. No, not with Dak. But while Dak, while Des was maybe, quote-unquote, declining and, the, and they were maybe he wasn't the receiver who they wanted him to be, they started spreading it around more, and then inevitably you saw him get released. But there was points in times where... There was just targets funneled that way. Sure. Which you could easily see that going Amari's way. And maybe the people who said, well, you paid a first for him, so maybe they're going to just pump him with targets. Hopefully so. Obviously. But I think it just does so much for this offense, even if you don't pump targets his way, and he's more at the five to eight targets a game kind of deal for the rest of the year. For the rest of the year, it's obviously up in the, up in the air. I would imagine towards the end of the year, by the time they get something worked out, he's probably working. If, let me tell you, if the Cowboys be are rolling, nine it's gonna, yeah, it's going to be a higher target volume than that. And if, they're, if the Cowboys are starting to win and put things together, it's going to be because Amari Cooper is doing his thing. Let's do it. I'd, I'd, I'd give up a first to try and go get Amari Cooper. I don't know if that might do it. I'd give you a first for him if I needed receivers. We're I mean, talking in fantasy football, yeah. not in not in Dallas Cowboys. I mean, I'd ab- absolutely give an NFL first. Round uh, yeah, I, him, I agree too. There's nothing like again, uh, even with fantasy dr- draft picks, it's still no guarantee. You're right. at least at fifty fifty. Right. At, well, let's at put it minimum. This way. But if you're in, in the NFL draft, I mean, Jesus, how many first round picks bust every single year? Right. Just how at, many? Not even receivers. How right. many rookies are going to be called in the rookie draft of your league next year before Maurice Cooper's name would be called? Not too many. I don't think too many, so I wouldn't have a problem giving up a first, especially if it's supposed to. Yeah, be there late. might there might if, be a one or two who land in a really good position after they get drafted. I lost uh, someone like the Rams. Well, Cooper's twenty four now, and somebody's going to come out and it's going to be good, and he's twenty years old. The kid and from Iowa State, Hope is a monster. And six four, great. six yeah. four, two twenty, and he could be awesome. So there's going to be that uh, that next generation awesome Your boy guy. Debo, Debo's a beast. I don't, um, I don't, I don't, I don't get caught. I don't look at the. Uh, it's. 
I don't know who's coming out and who's not coming out. I don't, I don't I'm very surprised. My that some people think that Debo Samuel's and Brian Edwards will be first round picks in the NFL, and I just I don't know about all that. Um, second rounders for sure, but first rounders. That's a lot. I don't think Clemson's. I think you're maybe a year or two away before the, you got a crop of guys who are coming, but they're not. They're not coming out. I th- anytime soon that are going to be first, maybe first rounders. Right. Uh, yeah, Higgins, I know you got a freshman that's awesome. Higgins is. Uh, I don't think he's quite ready. And then Etienne, Etienne. Uh, well, that's backs. Right. Um. Well, that's what we. Well, we're talking about receivers, right? Yeah. Now. Right. But so mid to late first for Amari Cooper can't hurt. Can't. Would, no, I would hurt my feelings. That. For sure, but obviously, uh, you know, you don't have to start that out to begin with. See what what can happen. I know there's a bunch of other good receivers. There's a I know Colorado's got a really good receiver. Uh, well, it's a receiver heavy class. There's only if you look at the yeah. DLF Devi rankings, it's a ton of wide receivers at the top of the sure. 19. And I'm class. sure I'm blanking on some of the really good ones right now, but I'm I'm not. That's not my focus. At this right. Not right this second. December. I'll tell you. It's who not the good week 17 are. yet. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that'll wrap up today's show. I hope yep. you enjoyed midseason meatloaf. Oh, how could you not? Right. Um, if you're on any, <laughs> maybe we'll go out to a little bat out of hell. I don't know what we're gonna go out to yet, and we'll figure that out uh, here in a second. But uh, if you're if you're on iTunes, please give us that five star review. Any of your platforms of choice, hit subscribe. Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. If you're on YouTube, please go hit subscribe. Help us out a bunch. Uh, we're, we go live on Sunday mornings. Uh, about 70% of the time we've been going live on YouTube. Sometimes we just yeah. do it just for our patrons if we don't have enough time. We got time. things going on. Yeah, it's it's tough. But we have been, if you hit the little uh, alarm notification, you'll be notified of any time we do post a video or go live. So check in on uh, Sunday morning for that. And uh, obviously we've, we've told you a little bit about Patreon. If you're looking for a whole extra hour, hour and a half worth of show, head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Patreon. You can also get there from our website, theffdynasty.com, uh, which is a cool place to check out all of our content. You can search for any of the players we've it's a, uh, broke down. a satchel for our things. Right. There's a cool forum. Vintage satchel. Get your questions Briefcase. in there. Uh, and, <laughs> Not a person. Uh, but really, the Patreon's where it's at. We're about to go talk for another hour plus about all the questions that we have had on the community page. You go right. back and forth, helping guys with their teams Especially and trades. Especially from Charlotte. <laughs> He's got his Carlos voice over there. We got a buddy Carlos that no one knows what you're what you're talking about. No, over there. I know. I'm and just uh, <laughs> muttering things. They've tuned out already. Anyways, yeah, we're giving them the the end of episode spiel. The sh- but uh, we're glowing like the metal on the edge of a knife. We are. Pay your pay your dues. Pay your homage to the greats. Meatloaf was one of the greats. He loves fantasy football. We love him. Shout out to the meat. Take us out. He's a vegetarian. He is a vegetarian. <laughs> Curveball. Such a random, Curveball. Such a random fact there. <laughs> All right, me. Take us out. Thanks for listening to Married to the Game.